yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't do that too much. I might throw my back out. <laughs> I, I expect I gotta take a leave before I play my How's basketball. Your, your ACL. My That's what I was just about to say, man. <laughs> Oh, it's good. Like, I, I got to warm up before I do anything. You know I'm saying we stretch before I, I do my job, stuff like that. Oh, Carl, I want to ask you a question real quick. There's nothing to do with nothing. I got this ginger, and when I chew it, does it taste garlicky after, afterwards? It's what it's supposed to do? Or is it, am I fucking no, up? No, ginger, ginger shouldn't taste garlicky. I mean, they're both going to be kind of spicy in a sense. I just, yeah. But ginger, I, I, uh, make sure you didn't throw a clove of garlic in there. Yeah, I was about to say, are you eating ginger or garlic? Because so I you put know. the ginger and some honey and some um, lemon in there. Now let it soak. Now I'm drinking huh. it. Okay. Yeah, now hmm. it tastes kind of garlicky when at the end. I, 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 I shaved it. Yeah. Huh. And for the record, there's no crack cocaine in this uh, <laughs> toxin. <laughs> Now listening to the Abyss Podcast with Paul the White Monk, Primo Jab, and Luke Cage. Hip hop on a higher form. Going further down pause, further down pause, further down pause. Tap in. Oof. It's- oh man, yo. We gonna we gonna we gonna say we oh am I muted? No, no you I can hear you. you. He's yeah. gonna ask him where he was at located anyway, then we missed it. We, yeah, yeah, no, we, did. we, we can ask again. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, We're man. just starting. We're Yo, just starting. Primo Jab. It's not all it's not Peace, organic. Tell it, man. Yo, that's wild. Your shirt, King. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I had yeah. to get that shit too, man. I'm Dominican, yeah. so I could not pass oh, up. Man. I could man, not pass up on this. Jim Duggan joint. Very nice. That's I, and I just rocked it. I had an interview um, here with the local TV station, and I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna I'm a rock rock my SD nap. You know, nice, nice. Cool, SD nap shit. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, yo, for uh, those of you out here, we have Rob Nice rap seminar on the horn. That's right. You know what I'm saying, boom, boom. Um, check it out. Uh, I don't like how them shit fit. You know what I'm saying, word. I it look is too pretty skinny. ginormous. Dude, yeah, that's I'll, the sleeve situation is a little, yeah, a little, a little pretty, crazy. Yeah. It's pretty ginormous, <laughs> man. You yeah. know, and then it, it kind of I'm gonna tug it out for a little bit. Yeah, and it's kind of like not too low. Don't hang low enough, right? Oh no, yeah. no. It. I mean, it, shit. This it joint, depends on what size you got. You know what I'm saying? I got extra large. That's what I. I, probably, I usually. I could have got a large. I think same. and been okay. Same. It seems like that yeah. neck spot is real, real tight. The next. The neck is perfect, to be honest with you. Like, that's how I would prefer the neck to be like this. I wonder how it's going to be after I wash it. It'll probably shrink down just a little bit, but probably not too much. It, I'm shook. I, I, ain't, I don't even want to wear mine. You know what I'm saying? I'm shook. I don't want to wash this joint. It costs $100. You know what I mean? Man, like, I, I feel like I'm going to see. I feel like I'm in a safe place. Fam, I, I, I was debating on what I was going to do. It. I was halfway on the verge of like, damn, I guess I'm just never going to wear this shirt. Yeah. Dry cleaners. You know? I told just Primo, I told Primo Jab. I told Primo Jab that too. It was like, yo, man, I can't be wearing I'm too skinny. I look like the an AIDS patient. I look like Flavor 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 and that shit. You know what He's an AIDS patient. <laughs> already bad. Look like how Flavor Flay, how Magic Johnson's supposed to look. Flavor that Flay. is hilarious. Wow. And then like you man, went there. Here we I go. Yo, bro, man. I ain't make that up though. Some more made that shit up, yo. Oh, he, she roasted Flavor Flay. But yo, but they got the Griselda crop tops. I ain't buying them shits either. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's for the I mean, ladies. That's for like nah, Armani season bro. though. The nah, niggas think, is wearing the crop top. I think top. they're trying nah. to bring back that mid eighties joint. Nah, small that, shorts that, uh, and the crop what top. Is it? Wow. Ezekiel Elliott look. Ezekiel yeah. Elliott. <laughs> Shout out to I my nigga that. from that nigga is from Mexico, Missouri. Not Mexico, 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 Missouri. That's my wow. nigga right there. Ze- Ezekiel uh, Elliott. That yeah, is oh, hilarious, wow. though. Yeah, that's just called Mexico. Oh, I was running track. We were gonna get into some rap shit real school quick, but I was running track, yeah. <laughs> and like they would, and we would go to Jeff City, the cap- capital of fucking, fucking Missouri, and yeah. all of a sudden, and then we they have all these people from like uh let's say uh different high schools, different places. They always say Mexico from Mexico. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker came all the way to Mexico to Missouri <laughs> to run track. I didn't know there was a Mexico Missouri until wow. like 
good niggas started coming from there. So yeah, that's it, mm-hmm. yo. Come on. I never heard of that shit. Never heard of that shit. Yeah, definitely. Missouri is a very they call it not Missouri. Misery. Misery. They, yeah, misery. misery. Yeah, yeah. Wow. True indeed. Oh, wait, well, let's get let's get into it. Hey, Carl, nice shirt you got there, bro. Shout out to uh, hundred miles. Oh, that's yeah. what I thought that was. Yeah, hundred miles. <clears> hundred <throat> miles. Yeah. 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 Toronto. Dope, yeah, dope big clothing. Up, big up to Canada, yo. We whooped their ass a couple days ago. Primo jab. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, yeah, with your Jim Doug, Doug and uh, yeah, your SD Nack joint right there. Yeah, Nack, with the one twenty on the back. Saw, you know it, Cognac. Yeah. Oh. Well, no, yo. <laughs> that's what it says on the back yo nice. that 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 is so funny man people was in the in the comments like yo what does conio mean what does conio mean you know what i mean I'm like i love I'm like, it Damn, y'all don't know what this shit means man yo, yeah what does conio mean conio it, like, it means like fuck shit yeah. you know what i'm saying like Ex- but if you're from spain yeah if you're from spain it means um vagina you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh really so if you're spanish that shit says something totally different. You know? <laughs> so let's go, go over to Spain. Go over to Spain and rock that shit. And let's see how. Yeah, how it you, works you get out. some attention for real. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that in Barcelona. Then fuck that. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> That's some crazy <laughs> shit, G. Well, 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 well. It's already bad enough that uh, I'm walking around with a. Uh, uh, a a Jesus with bloody eyes <laughs> with one eight seven on the back and, and, and Arab <laughs> big on the back. And everybody think it's so anti semitic. You know or saying? you can like, pull well, out your yeah, Hitler yeah. joint. The Hitler I, I got is, it. That's insane. That man. is wild, he, yo. He fooled us all, bro, to wear Hitler hoodies. Yeah, that was the only one I couldn't get, man. I couldn't. I couldn't oh, do that it. one, man. That was the only I one. I got uh, that. I don't one. think uh, nothing's fly about. I don't think nothing's fly about Hitler. Person, no, 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 so I, could I'm not, I couldn't rock that nah. one. I'm not rolling it. through Atlanta fly. bald and white with a Hitler joint. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna fucking happen. Nah, it's about context. You know it's, what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta have the yeah. right context. Context doesn't matter when you're broken in a hospital. <laughs> nah, you know, yeah, you're fucked up, yeah, man. man. But boom, that we have episode hilarious. issue 96. That's right. Of the Abyss podcast, we yep. have a very special guest right here. He has a very vast knowledge of hip hop. He's been around for a while doing this thing. You know what I'm saying? We're a real respected member of our community. Yes. We have yes. Rob Nice. Rap seminar and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Yeah. Big yes, up everybody. Yes. Thank you, man. Thank you for Thank having you me. Yes, welcome, no doubt, welcome. No doubt, man. No doubt. We here now. We here there, now. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely, man. You, you, we, we with you. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So yeah. you in El Paso? Yeah, man. I'm in. I'm in the TX. In the That's EPTX. Right. Yeah, out here, yo, uh, on the border of Mexico. Literally, like I could see yeah. Juarez, New Me- uh, Juarez, Mexico. Right here, we got New Mexico right there, like five minutes away. Mm-hmm. It's a unique Dang. geographic location. Yep. I ten. So if you if you're driving That's from, right through. you know, across the U.S., you stop. You might stop through here. You know, mm-hmm. pretty dope. I got a fun tour. I got a fun story for you. I actually did drive from uh, Atlanta to Cali one time, mm-hmm. passing through El Paso, man. They had to uh they had to divert us around a couple of bodies laid out on the the expressway because motherfuckers had just gotten in the shootout, you know, some cartel wow. motherfuckers or something Yo, crazy. You hear about stuff like that every once in a while, you know. Yeah, it was um, wild. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This was it gets like kind of crazy. You know, two thousand seven, eight, you know, something yeah, that like that. Was, that was the, was the, the, the peak of the yeah. cartel violence, and some of it did spill over a little bit. But they mm-hmm. would like, yo, there was like car bombs in Juarez at that time. God, and man. they would set, they would, they would like shoot up the block and then set a car bomb. And then when the uh, police show up and the emergency medical teams and whatever, they detonate that shit. Oh, wow. That's, that, that's the type they of shit that was happening playing. in Mexico. Yeah, man. That was playing some that game shit. raw. Yeah. Mm. And y'all motherfuckers wonder I got a regular job. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> stay stay yeah. away from that. I think I yeah. live a little bit longer. So, I, I, you're from Texas. You're from there. Yo, it's a funny story. Actually, I was born in Texas when I was, you know, I was born in um outside of Dallas, but okay. never lived there. My parents were divorced when I was when I was like five, and I bounced to Dominican Republic with my dad. I went to live with my pops okay. in DR, and then uh, from there we, I went to Brooklyn. I lived in. Uh, Sunset Park, Brooklyn, for a minute. Oh shit! And, uh, no, 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 yeah, BK, Word. yeah, man. And my yeah. my pops was a preacher, 
he was a preacher in the Salvation Army. And oh, so nice. we we had a little spot in Sunset Park. And then, uh, you know, I moved around a, a lot, like between my parents, my mom, she is an educator. She's been an educator her whole life. So mm. I moved back and forth. So if you know anything about the Salvation Army, the preachers there, um, they have certain like limited time in certain cities. So they send you where there's the most need, quote unquote, right? Mm -hmm. So so my pops, he would get moved around a lot. So we would have to move and we moved all around New York and Buffalo uh, with him, you know, in the Salvation Army. And then when I lived with my mom, she's she was an educator. So she is an educator, so retired. But um, so now, so boom, she would move around. And if I was with her, I would move around. So with her, I lived in California, Arizona, um, and then some time in Texas. And then with my pops, it was like New York, Florida, and um, and Dominican Republic, you know? So mm -hmm. it was a lot of moving around, um, but I'm blessed to have moved around because yeah. I got to mm -hmm. learn about cultures and I got to, mm -hmm. um, you know, meet people from everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And I, I have people, I could go anywhere on earth and I got somebody I know there, you know what I'm saying? It's somebody yeah. I yeah. can I can yeah. reach out to. So, um, it, you know, when I was a kid, it was tough moving around and I didn't really see the big picture. But now, now I'm, I'm grateful that I did, man, for real. In high side, yeah. yeah. Where'd you uh, stay in Dominican? I was in Santo Domingo in the capital. Oh, okay, you in the in city. The yeah. Yep, Santo, yep, in La Capital yeah. right there. Yep. No doubt. Um, you know, I have family there and all of that. And so um it's cool when i see like the dominican artists getting 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 on and getting some shine and um you know i feel like it's one of my cousins or something it's not but yeah, bro, i feel, you, I I feel, feel like you. it is you know it's like yo, yeah. that's, that's my people right they look like my uncle or something you know yeah so mm -hmm. um it's cool seeing these artists uh doing their thing right now um but yeah man i've traveled a lot i've seen a lot of different places and have a lot of different perspectives so you know I think it all leads to who I am, you know, as a, as a person That's and everything, dope. you know? Yeah. True indeed. And it definitely informed my hip hop knowledge, right? Yeah, because had to. being Charlie, in, in Florida, in, oh, yeah, New, York, in New York, like yeah. I got a little flavor of everything, but my foundation is, is in New York. That's where I first, where I first, um, I would say like felt like I was immersed in hip hop culture. I, I didn't know it was hip hop. It was just, what it was, you know, how people spoke, how people dressed, yeah. what they listened to, like on the basketball court in the South Bronx. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like, yo, this is hip hop. It was just what we were immersed in, you know, mm -hmm. um, and what surrounded us. And but moving and seeing how it is in different places, I started to see similarities, but also a lot of differences, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. Yep. Yep. Well, well. Continue, continue. OK, boom. I want you to continue the story. But all those places that you lived. Like Florida, Cali, Dominican, uh, New York. Like, what what was your favorite place as a youth growing, going, going? Um, oh man, it's crazy. I would say that um, there's no place like New York, man. Okay, I know New York has changed a lot. I was just there recently for the Hip Hop Ed Conference in in, in the Bronx, but there's no place like New York, man. Like the culture, all the different cultures are there. Um, the the food the street food you know what i'm saying the music yeah street food people, i love the street food people in new york are like advanced too you could ask motherfuckers about anything you know what i'm saying and they'll have something for you for you know i don't want to stereotype but um <laughs> you know new, new york I, I i really i really like to be in ny you know it's it's just something there that's unmatched i don't know how to explain it um but you know i, I really like new york i love dominican republic um i love it out there too because because it's just beautiful like they got beaches yeah. they got they got the food you know you, you get all the good food out there and and you know uh when i'm with my fam like they show love too like people are so um kind you know and willing to like open their doors to you and feed you and make sure you're mm -hmm. good yep. you know so um there's a lot of poverty out there but I think Absolutely. people's hearts are rich though. We got wealthy hearts, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, um, Cali is crazy too though, because it actually, I learned a, maybe the most, I, I, I don't know, my formative years were in Cali. 
And I learned so much about just rap in general there, you know, with with people that I, I was was with um, <clears throat> learning about like Tupac. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know about Tupac till I moved to California. So, you know, whereabouts in really? California were That's you? Interesting. Yeah, I lived I lived in uh, honestly, I lived in a little town called Bakersfield. There's not much okay. there. Oh, of course. Yep. Yeah. It's, um, university there? Huh? There's a university. Yep, there's a university right? there. Yeah. The dividing yep. line. Yeah. So it's like, like, a, depending on how fast you drive, it's like an hour, like an hour, maybe two hours uh, uh, from L.A., um, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And then Cal State Bakersfield. before Fresno, Cal State Bakersfield. That's where my mom yeah, my works. Homie, yeah, my homie uh, played basketball there. That's the yeah. only reason why I know that shit. Yeah. You got a scholarship. Yeah, that's where my mom worked right there. That's why I was there. So um, Cal Cali. <laughs> Culture in Cali is crazy. Like hip hop shit mm. out there is wild, man. It's different, you know. Um, yeah, I don't I really listen to, to much Cali rap, too. to be honest. Yeah, so my I lived guy. in. I, I used lived... to rag. Go ahead. I, I, I used to rag. Rag on the homie too. He said he uh he went to uh Cal, and I said no, you didn't. You went to Cal State Bakersfield. <laughs> we used to, that's how we used to like clown on. That's yo. different. Yeah, yeah, it don't count. I, don't think count. D, I think it's still D one. I think it's still. I think it's still D one. It though. is it's still. Yeah, D, they, they made the tournament one, one year. But they made the tournament one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, it, 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 but you we, know, that's, it, it kind of don't count. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of hillbillies. I, it's a lot of hillbillies in yeah, Bakersfield. Is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's that hillbilly shit. You know what I'm saying out there in some parts. The fields and all that shit. Right. They got this spot. I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but probably because my I got a beer I don't usually drink. But they got this spot out in Bakersfield. Much respect to everybody in Bakersfield. It's called Oildale, Oildale, yeah. and that's where all mm. the hillbilly ass people live. Man, that shit is another planet, man. Where? Yeah, Carl, Carl, what, what was you gonna get to, Carl? Uh, I was gonna I say I, I lived in the Bay Area for for about three years, um, like early '90s, like '90 90 through '93, um, mm -hmm. and then moved out here. Um, what, what time period were you out in California? I was there in the, um, early two thousands. Okay. So like, oh, like, when I was, was there in 2000 over. when, when the twin towers went down, I was in, I was in California. Wow. Watching okay. that shit on TV. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I was just at the twin towers the year before. That was Ooh. crazy. That was Dang. crazy. Yeah. Yo, cash right. money took over for two thousand nine nine two thousand. Yeah. Yep. I was with all that juvie, juvie. Yeah. Uh, what is yeah. it? 500 degrees. Who was degrees. that? Yeah, was that Lil degrees. Wayne? Five, yeah, five hundred degrees or five thousand degrees? Five hundred degrees, well, Juvie. Yeah, Lil yeah. Wayne was dropping. Fifty Cent dropped that uh oh, that good. track where he was dissing everybody <laughs> during that era rob, too. Out of yep. rob, out of rob. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yo, okay. Hey, you put the dog down. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. That's he did. What he said to Missy Elliott. Yeah, hey, oh, you, no. you know, that's that. wild yeah. that he had yeah, bars for right. Misty, though. That's that, yeah, that's that is so wild. Yeah. Man. He said, I'm trying to get on. Like, fuck that. Yeah. Everybody getting one. Catch this. Yeah. 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 Yo, you, I was going to uh, 50 right there, yo. Go ahead. I was going to ask, man. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's funny. You said something just a second ago about uh, how Cali claims Tupac so hard. And yes. that era, and that's how you, you know, that's what you're what you were stumbling on they put you on the tupac yeah. when for a while i think before the 2000s and even even in the late let's say the late 90s really right until tupac died right before he died i mean tupac was i mean he was kind of considered like just kind of a universal dude he he came up right off yep. of the the digital underground but mm -hmm. If you ask me, his most important album, his most powerful album, Me Against the World, that's an East Coast album like a motherfucker, man. Mm, in my I opinion. feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I feel I mean, you. I feel you. I see that. Yes. Yeah, so, it was like, I think it was the Death Row era that solidified yeah. him out there, man. Like, yeah, that's when they adopted that, uh, him and brought All him Eyes in on there. Me joint. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, the double and he was a heavy post. Bay dude too, though. Like I said, I can't, you know, you can't deny that he was connected to the Bay, yeah. you know, Richie Rich and mm -hmm. Mac Mall and all them dudes, you know, and you, especially, when, you know, that whole clique. When he passed, I was in Florida at that time. I had moved from New York to Florida and I didn't, I, I knew I had heard his name. I was familiar. I just didn't listen to his music much. I'm like, yo, this man died. Like they killed him. Right. Yeah. And up until then, I was like, Biggie, Biggie, nobody could see Biggie. Like, Biggie is the God, you know? Um, and then I moved to Cali and P 
people were crying. People would cry yeah. mm-hmm. about Tupac. They I had my homies. School. My guy Benny, my <laughs> guy B. Cried in my school in Chicago. They cried. They did. They, yeah, I absolutely. was like, yo, I was, I was, I we were driving somewhere, smoking and shit. Listen to Pac. These people were rapping and crying. You know, I was like, oh my god, they were reciting all his lyrics, like. And it just, I was like, what is going on? Like, what is there about this, this dude? These guys are crying, you know what I'm saying? So I got into the music heavy, man. And I, and, um, I, I respect Pac, man. I know a lot of people, um, nowadays they have criticisms or they're like, yo, he wasn't a great lyricist or whatever, but he was powerful, man. He was a powerful writer, you know? All right. So now now yeah yeah. Okay, Luki, no, we gonna let you, we gonna let you get in there. But what (laughs) that's a great yeah, I know, but it's the, it's the nothing that you said that said so much. But what I'm what I'm gonna say is so that that's a great transition into. Uh, I mean, I think that's that's your professional introduction right there. So you you just quoted saying, "Hey, Tupac was a powerful writer." You got to accept that, which I think everybody yes. needs to honor the fact that Tupac could galvanize so many people through his medium, through his performance. Right. Right. How do you rank Tupac as an artist? in hip hop like as mm. far as technic technicality technical skill uh you know feel ability mc skill rhyme structure all of that type of stuff mm. i think that uh that's a good question you know um and i know there's debates on whether or not oh we we're about to have one right now it was a lot of debates like hip hop rap like um honestly man i don't even think Pac was a rapper I think he was uh, more of a. Um, oh, what the fuck? Okay. No, don't Luke, mind, he said, Luke, nah. Don't he said, nah, I don't want to hear this. He said, I don't want to hear this. I mean, I, 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 what happened? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. You, yo, you muted your video. You cut your video out. Yeah, it's just your video. Man, what the don't fuck? worry. We can still hear you, man. So keep, I mean, it's all right, Rob. Keep going. I'm back. So, I'm back. Oh, you're back. I'm so sorry. So, so Pop, I feel like even though he rapped. Even though he I, rapped, even though he rapped, even though Pac rapped, I don't feel like he was a rapper. I, I feel like he was more of a, in my opinion, like um, at, well, it depends on also what era we're talking about. But like, he had a message. He had like he was to me like a political figure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he was complex. He he contradicted himself a lot, right? Because one mm-hmm. moment he'll be like, "Dear Mama." You know what I'm saying? You the black queen mama. And the next moment he's like, you know, you wonder why they call you bitch. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Wonder why they call you bitch. Exactly. Right? So he he was very uh, but even then that song is is, is that's supposed a message to be empowering. Song. It's a dope you know? yeah, so, no, that's right. that's like, calling calling people Pac, out. It calling people out, right? And so so Pac had a message. And he reminds me of like a Nipsey had a message, right? Um uh uh who what other MCs have a message? Now, is he the illest lyricist? I don't know, but there is an argument that he is because if you think about it, really? um who can receive his message, right? Who can people Everyone. of all ages can feel right. Pac's message? Yep. If you a thug, you can feel it. If you're an intellectual, you're gonna find something. Pac has case studies. You could study pop lyrics and learn about life during his era, right? You can learn about um, um, uh, poverty during his era, right? You can learn about the struggle of people in the street during his era, but you can also learn cautionary tales. You can look at Tupac as a lesson himself mm-hmm. on life, right? You could look at... Um, you know that that aspect but when we're talking about the raps he was using metaphors he was using similes mm-hmm. um he was telling narrative stories um he was writing poetry they're teaching Pac Pac's poetry in elementary school there's elementary wow. school students who don't even know him as a rapper they know him as a poet you know I what don't. i'm saying and so i see Pac as a descendant of people like Malcolm X, right? Mm. As a descendant okay. of Huey P. Newton, as a descendant of the Dr. Kings, right? A figure who had a message. It's in his blood. It's in his you blood, understand, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, a, a, a figure who had a powerful voice, he had passion. Um, and that passion, I think, overshadows 
technical ability a lot of times. Yes. Right? Yes. So totally if you agree. can have a black thought who's the most technical, like, you know what I'm saying? And you can listen to black thought and be like, yo, this man is the greatest of all time. Mm. But you can hear Pac and he'll make you cry. You know, he'll he'll hit your heart. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think it's a difference there, you know, and and I'm not saying Black Thought doesn't have the content and can't reach you, but Pac had what you call duende. Ah, uh, yes. Duende yes. is an energy. Yes. Right. That can <clears throat> make you confront death. Right. It's an energy that can move you like Nina Simone. Yeah. Nina Simone was not technically the greatest singer. You can't say she had a beautiful voice, but she could break you down. You know, she can make you feel it. Make so you feel alive. Was, you know what I mean? So I would say Pac is special in that realm where I don't know if he was the most technical, lyrically sharp, but he had a way of doing it that would that transmits, you know, that that could hit you, you know, um, and affected people, obviously. OK, so but yeah, we go ahead, talk go ahead. some rap science so, today. Go OK, Carl. so. Part of my my issue when people um, hate on Tupac is there are so many different aspects to mm -hmm. what makes a rapper great. And if we're going to go by Black Thought, well, then everybody else sucks. Right. You know, you're so going to have Elzai and you're going to. Right, but, well, <laughs> and Ka, Ka, you're going to have you're going to have unique individuals that are going to stand out, but it's very few. You can't mm -hmm. base everything off of, you know, the technical ability. Not everybody is going to have, you know, multisyllable rhyme schemes like Doom did. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but, you know, in the same sense, was DMX great? Right. Now, right. technically, he wasn't doing anything that was blowing your socks off. You would have fight, fight these tears. But but <laughs> he he wrote songs that were were completely hook driven, and yeah. he had an aggressive energy and the sound of his voice. In the same sense, Tupac, and I think with Tupac, you can pick out bars, you can pick right. out certain songs and say, "There's the flash of technical ability." Mm -hmm. But I think he was an artist first and foremost, and right. he was creating art. Mm -hmm. And and in that sense, to follow up what you're saying, Rob, is that, you know, he's trying to move you. He's trying to evoke emotion, whether it's anger, whether it's humor, um, whether it's sadness, despair. You know, that's what artists do. And I think mm -hmm. he was going to take whatever palette he needed to to create that art. Sometimes that was going to be technical. Sometimes mm -hmm. that was going to be very hook driven. Sometimes that was going to be. And, and the biggest problem I think people have with Pac is he had a very specific rhyme mm -hmm. uh, flow. Uh, they, they, I, yeah, I, yeah. Which, you know what yeah. I mean? If you and, ask me, and that, and flow, that. that is unique. It is. He, if you, if you it hear anybody thing. saying, um, yeah, yeah, you was a black queen, mama. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. is unique, right? Mm -hmm, and yeah. that's something that is missing today a lot of times, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was, still taken, cats, it right, was but bitten. It was bitten for a second, but then they went away from it. Like, little Zane sounded little like Zane, Tupac. Absolutely. Mm, I'm like, yo, yeah. he bit Tupac all the way. I'm like, yo, I mm. like this song. It can sound like Tupac. Anyway, all I saw when Carl was talking was Biggie Smalls on his shirt. I didn't hear anything <laughs> that Carl said about Black Thought and none of that stuff. All I saw was Biggie Smalls. No, I'm, sorry, I'm joking. I'm joking. But to Carl's point, Pac's flow, that unique flow, is very easy to digest compared very to easy. a Black a Black Thought and Elzai. So yeah. boom, the technicality is like, um, even though the applesauce is good for you, the applesauce is great. You know what I'm saying? You have to feed the baby applesauce before you give him the apple. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I think Tupac was a very, very good mox applesauce with all the vitamins and nutrients and minerals. So they didn't even know sometimes that they didn't even know they're eating healthy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't mm -hmm. even know. So when they ate it, boom, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. And they're getting healthy at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But to that point, I still like Carl's shirt, the guy on Carl's shirt, more than <laughs> I like uh, Tupac. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, I feel that's that. a good argument. That's a good argument. I mean, I think I'm not Biggie. Mad. Yeah, but I, yeah, Biggie's another one who, who had his. I'm sorry. 
Well, yeah. well, but that that okay. So I got two things for that. Number one, I think Biggie's flow is bitten just like Pac's because when you hear like you know, like a bit has skills, just that like you hear people spitting in that that kind of cadence that Biggie used to spit. But also, yeah. Biggie, you say it's about the beats. Okay, Ready to Die had the same producers as Me Against the World. Mm-hmm. It's different beats. Different beats. It don't, it it don't, is. Beats it don't. Is. Not really. Listen, I mean, it like, kind of, it sort of. Easy Mo B still kind of laced them the same. Mm. It's you different I mean? tracks, though. Of course, I, it's different tracks. Because each MC wrote it differently, but. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm like gonna say they're this, from though, the same era. They, even they during it. even during the East Coast West Coast thing, Pac and Biggie still had a huge mutual respect for each other, and Absolutely. that should say enough. That should yeah. say enough right there. Yeah, I'm not trying to make these guys come back from the dead and box, but I'm just saying, say, <laughs> that'd be that'd be funny as hell. I got my money on Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Because he used to fight in his back with his legs up in the air. Anyway, I, I will say this though: <laughs> that the reason I would tip Biggie out or put put Biggie over the top on that for me personally is not only did oh, Biggie have his own style, but then he could go with Bone Thugs and Harmony and and keep pace well, with Pac them. Well, did too. Well, yeah, you did, too. did too. I didn't the know thing Pac about listen though, change his style to to get with them. No, Pac no. was still uh, rapping. Pac, yo, Pac was still rapping. Know. Pac. Biggie yo, rapped about Bone Thugs. Yeah, but listen, exactly. though, but I mean, Pac, he, he point, crushed Carl. that. The work ethic. Pac was way more prolific than Big. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Way, absolutely. And, and the career, career wise, like films, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so it's Pac was doing everything, man. And that was innovative. You know, I, he's one you of like- the first rappers I remember in movies. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And things absolutely. like that, right? So, like, I feel like rap was his medium like because he was talking to certain people you know he was talking to us so to speak right yeah but like bob marley bob marley he'll put the message simple for you complex shit simple Mm -hmm. so you can receive it you know and understand what you were saying about the applesauce right applesauce um and Pac, you know it's not easy to do that though no it's not easy to take Mm -hmm. complex ideas and make them simple for you to to receive it and understand it, what's going but on, but it, you know? it was covered. It, it was covered in um. It was covered in thugness, and so that was one thing that was um prevalent. Yeah, in, I mean, but, boom, uh, like, talking, talking was, about what, no, talking about the work ethic though. So. You're talking about you know in Tupac, a guy that took a job dancing for Digital Underground just so that he mm-hmm. could get around them to spit bars to show them that mm. he could spit bars. <laughs> yeah. No, and, 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 and but, but that's yeah. He had a hustle. I guess and, that's exactly yeah. the dance yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't do that too much. I might throw my back out. <laughs> I, I, expect, I gotta take a leave before I play my that's basketball. It, my, my, ACL. My neck, that's what I was just about to say, man. <laughs> oh, it's good. Like, I, I gotta warm up before I do anything. You know what I'm saying we stretch before I, I do my job stuff like that. Oh, Carl, I want to ask you a question real quick. There's nothing to do with nothing. I got this ginger. And when I chew it, does it taste garlicky after afterwards? That's what it's supposed to do. Or is it am I fucking no, up? No, ginger ginger shouldn't taste garlicky. I mean, they're both gonna be kind of spicy in a sense. All right, just, yeah. But All ginger, right. uh, make sure you didn't throw a clove of garlic in there. Yeah, I was about to say, are you eating ginger or garlic? Because so I you put know. the ginger in some honey and some um lemon in there. And I let it soak. Now I'm huh. drinking it. Okay. Yeah, now it tastes kind of garlicky when at the end. I, I, I shaved it. Yeah. Uh. And for the record, there's no crack cocaine in this uh, <laughs> toxin. Damn. If y'all listen to the last there episode, there was a lot of yeah, PSA. a lot of crack debate in the last episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Including some accusations yeah, thrown not, around. There's no no crack. So yeah, but I never smoked any crack. Now let's get this back to some more. Uh, oh, man. We're, we, we're starting yes. from Genesis, and we're seeing where shit. we're going. Where 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 we've gone. Yeah. Yes, sir. So when did you first get in to this, into the hip hop? You were in New York and you heard at the basketball court and everything. You heard all this, uh, all this music. You fell in love with the art mm-hmm. or the art form or the music. Uh, like when, when did this happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was I was in New York. Um, what, what era? What year? What year was this? You mean or it doesn't matter. Like I, I just want I really what I, what I want to do is yeah, tell you to get the story from as a youth. So when you started studying the science of hip hop, yeah, so and stuff I like was this. in, you know, when I really got heavy into knowing this is hip hop, I was in Buffalo and okay. I would listen to the college radio station there. 
And they would play, this. yeah. They yeah. would play Wu Tang. They would play mm-hmm. Mob Deep. They would play the Fugees. They would play, but they would also play like dance hall reggae, mm-hmm. like Cape Laton and Sizzla and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Beanie Man, you know, I, I used to Beanie love Man. that shit. Yep. So I would stay up for the show in my little room and record the show on a cassette tape and just catch all the songs that I liked and just record. Oh you yeah, know? record it. With the tape yep. over the over the yep. other tape over the tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I that. Stay doing that. And then whenever mm-hmm. I went back to New York, because I had family there, I would go, we would go to New York often. I would I would record hot 97 shows. All the mm-hmm. hot night. It was DJ Red Alert and like mm-hmm. stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. So record all of that. And um that really shaped me a lot, man. And that kind of shaped my ear. Like, this is what it's supposed to sound like. This is hip hop, you know? Okay. And I think that's why one of the reasons why today I, I love East Coast <laughs> rap. Like I love this East Coast rap. Like this whole scene is crazy. I know um uh, it's a lot going on and I can't keep up with everybody, but it's mm. it's it's um so yeah, so that's really like some of my origins was like just listening to college radio and my cousins, my cousins would put me on to music, you know. Um mm. and then when boom, when I bounced out to Florida, I was in Tampa, and Tampa has a lot of mm. um I don't know if y'all are familiar with Florida and Tampa, but there's Shout a lot of new- I love Tampa. Yeah, there's a lot of New York rejects in Tampa. Yep. yep. Right? It's a lot of like escapees, yeah. snowbirds. Exactly. Like a lot of people left New York to go live in Tampa. I don't know why, but um and when I was a freshman in high school, there was this group called the Unknown Soldiers. They used to call themselves the Unknown Soldiers, the Mystic Click, right? And these dudes would be in the in the I was at Hillsborough High School. Mm. Um, and these dudes would be in the hallway banging on the soda machines, freestyling um, off the top. And they would rap about people walking by. They would make fun of people. They would they would snap on you. They would clown you. They would make fun of your clothes if your shirt was too small. They would <laughs> laugh about how your elbows was out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, make fun I'd of your corduroys. Safe. Like, yeah, you would be safe. <laughs> so... Um, so I remember seeing these guys. I was in ninth grade. Like, yo, this is like miracle workers. They're they're doing like, how could they do this? And I never forget this dude named G Lover. He was in the group. G Lover. Um, he would rap in class. Like he would. This dude was old as fuck too. He was like, he wasn't supposed to even be in school anymore. He was like a super. <laughs> super. He was like he was like twenty or something. I don't even know how old he was, but. He would he would rap in class like fuck the teacher you know like the teacher would be tra- and he would just be rapping and stuff um and that really got me wanting to actually rap like i want to be like these guys right um mm-hmm. and so i would take whatever i learned from them at school and uh i would make i, I would <laughs> i would make my little cousin frankie rap my cousin mm. bison i would make him rap and i'd be like yo this is let's let's do this because this is a cypher and, and so we just started trying to emulate what we saw and listening to the mixtapes mm-hmm. red man on the dj clue or the you know the by stretching bobito you yeah. know what i'm saying and mm-hmm. all that mixtape era so getting it we would go to the flea market and shoplift mixtapes because oh, they would shit, get yeah. all the all the uh mixtapes from new york and we would go to the flea market and put them put the mixtapes down our pants legs you tuck your jeans into your socks. <laughs> yep. So they won't you tuck drop your out. jeans into your socks and you drop the, the tapes in there. You know what I'm saying? And and so uh we used to do all of that, but that that was that was some good times right there, man. You know? Um mm-hmm. yeah. And in some ways I feel like I'm still seeking that of course that energy. That's that first hit. That's that first you know, hit. You know what I'm I mean? Still You're seeking always chasing, chasing that. the yeah. dragon. Yep. yep. I'm still Absolutely. seeking that. Like like J. Ru the damager. Woo. Cassette yep. tape. Like you're playing mm-hmm. yourself with all that rah 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 like that that on tape. Oh, is that's like, the rap of math joint. Okay, gotcha. the, yeah, you know what I'm saying. My like J-Ru is the sun rises. So, you know oh yeah, I mean? that's he too. In the east, yeah, that's he too. Yep. Yo, man, hold on. See, number one, we can't move too much further without another pause for the cause. Uh, give me your expert opinion about Red Man. You just brought him up. There was a point in time when Red Man was the king MC of the east coast yes uh absolute fact he yeah. was he was mm-hmm. a pop uh not not pop but he was able to do crossover kind of hits icon uh, with like mm-hmm. i be that and stuff like that yeah um but 
there his technical skill or the respect level that he had as far as being cipher made and cipher proven, but just creatively, <laughs> he is easily one of the 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 all time top. MCs out here. Gotta be. Where Eminem bought for him a lot. Oh yeah, Eminem. Well. Eminem is a uh, is a junior of him, but Eminem, you know, again, you hear we he gets he gets praised him all the time. He has to because he came from a New Jersey clique. You know yeah. what I mean? He came up with the Outsiders, mm. so you know he has to he has to give props to Redman. But I say all that to say, expert opinion, Rob. What? How do you break down Redman's strengths and how he how he uh, has impacted? In, mm-hmm, in hip hop, mm-hmm. what's what's his talents in your eyes yeah. or by your one, assessment? One, one of the things that I love about oh. Redman is his humor. Yes, he that is helps. at the same time technical, but he'll make you laugh to, out loud. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, what, what 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 he said? A girl was uh, doing cornrows in his asshole hair one time. <laughs> you remember that shit? Uh, give, wild, you cornrows, uh, give me cornrows down my crack because yeah. I'm nasty like that. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? That is like hey, man, I ain't never man. heard no shit like that before, man. He's a legend, Red, man. He is, man. He, He's hilarious. He, it's not it's easy crazy. to be funny. To like to be yeah. a, to to like write in a way that's humorous, but it's still dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And mm-hmm. not Absolutely. corny. Um pun could do that too. Pun was funny too, a little bit. I think pun had some sense of humor, but Redman, um, when it comes to to that, he's so animated, um, like a comic book character to me. He's like mm-hmm. out of Definitely. this world, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And when I saw him and, and Method Man uh, in concert, and this was the How High tour, and they were hanging from the ceiling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah on these yeah, cables yeah. So, flying over yeah, the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That Dope. blew my mind, you know, but but read his creativity, the stories, the skits. He I would listen to the skits like I didn't I didn't. Skip Absolutely. Skits, you know what I'm saying? It was like part of the song, you know, and then what was it at the chicken head convention? And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. all of that shit. <laughs> But uh oh I got a soda like yeah. <laughs> you can't have the, come on uh, man like yeah. that is like it takes a special type of genius to right. be able to do all of that but then be ill like yep. just ill all around man like he he's one of the the greatest you know, he's I it, I I don't like doing top 5s and all that but it, he's in my at the top of my list if there was a list yeah yeah, as far as yeah, bar, is bar for bar, bar for bar, his, his yeah, vocal, right. he was ludicrous before ludicrous was ludicrous. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like the vocal inflections, um, mm-hmm. the imagery. Yeah. Oh, shout out to Four Eyes too, because like you know, Four shout Eyes out, helped ludicrous. God. Yeah, ludicrous. He helped, he helped ludicrous with that shit too as well. Yeah, man. Four Eyes is ball. nice, man. Yeah, I got hilarious. to meet him. I got to meet him in Atlanta uh, for the Pendulum Meet graduation. We had mm. a, a showcase, um, and Four Eyes showed up for the freestyle cipher, and he mm. killed it, man. That guy is crazy. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah I got to see him perform it at uh, the show that you did, Primo Jab. Yeah, you know that's that's an yeah, that's my guy, man. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's his dope man. live. Yeah. Great performer. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact: that's, that's who that's who kind of inspired me to rap, man. I said mm. I saw him at a really? uh, talent show. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, absolutely. We all went to the wow. same high school. He is inspiring, man. He's brilliant. Oh. Like, I, like he's he's one. I, like when it comes to these freestyles and stuff, I don't think there's many that could see him. You know, no. with, with that, because he trains, man. He trains. It's not. Uh-huh. I mean, he, he it is freestyle, but at the same time, the man is a machine when it comes to uh, putting together concepts and that imagery and stuff. Uh, he's a he's a student of rhyming. And he he takes it very seriously, you know. I remember. I mean, you know, we used to live together. He he uh, definitely studied to become an ill MC. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 yeah. evident. Something something Redman, the concepts that he yeah. would use, 
<laughs> if you find a bag of weed on the floor, what what you going to do? Pick it up, pick, pick it, it up, up. Pick like, it up. Yeah. The concepts. Every song yeah. was like a concept, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was on theme. Yeah, man. Green Island is one of my that's one of my shits with him and Uncle yeah. Quilly. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> the Super Love Superman Lover series. Superman Lover. You know, come on. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. It, All it, of that. It, it, definitely you be in the spirit and uh yeah, and and, and it pops out, huh? Mm -hmm. right. The imagination is uh crazy. Yeah. It's just hood enough and just um for lack of better terms, corny enough. It just mm -hmm. works perfectly. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like when the pancakes get the syrup and the butter together. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. what it's read. That's right, yeah. Carl. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times, a lot of times in school, the funny person is the the fat kid or the nerdy kid or somebody that's trying to not get beat up a lot. When you have somebody that's cool and funny, mm -hmm. they end up on a different level, and that's that's yeah. definitely red. And now. humble, he seemed humble too. Oh, I'm sure you could have, like, you could just talk to dude, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I would know. I, I don't know. Sometimes people artists seem that way, and then you meet them in real life. And they, <laughs> Get the they, fuck away! They, they from break your exactly. heart. Absolutely yeah, right. I, I don't Do try you, to meet cats no more. You know. Stop it. Yeah, you like yo. Me, you meet your heroes. Sometimes you be like, yo, fuck that motherfucker, yo. Like, <laughs> yeah. real shit. Yeah, sometimes like, it happens. Like, man, I like, met. Stand uh, outside. <clears throat> I met. Um, I met. I was at Rock the Bells, man, and uh, this Immortal Technique was there, and uh, mm. I really like Immortal Technique's music. You know, and but he's real militant. He's militant with it. And I remember he was standing on the side of the stage with some of his people. And I was like, yo, immortal technique. What up? Like, I, I you know, I, I walked up on him, you know, and he was looking at me like, who the fuck is this? You know, oh, oh, and then shit. I spoke to him in Spanish. I was like, yo, mano, esta música que tú tienes está tan sendia. What? And that claro, was when claro. he, he lightened up and he was like, yo, okay. and Mano, and he, okay, okay. he did a little half okay, hug, okay. you know? Uh, but <laughs> just walking up to him with, in English, he was like, nah, get out of my face, you know? So what I could have switched right quick. I was like, yo, I'm one of you, man. I'm one of you, you know? <laughs> that's, but that's that's kind of foul, though, that he would, he would play you like that. I mean, I think that's, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like he, you can't be a fan of a mortal technique. Like, that's I got crazy. I got a lot of these stories, tip man. Tip. Uh, Raskas, I met Rask. I kind of met Raskas oh. once, right? Yeah. And it was at the Wu Tang meet and greet at A3C, right? And it's one of oh, these situations. Shit. You was you there? Oh, you was there? I yeah. was there, I was, man. I didn't, yeah. I didn't go to the meet and greet because I was with Boss Son. I was with Old Dirty Bastard Son. Anyway, boy, go ahead. You, you okay? I was Little Wayne. The, the next day, Little Wayne. Yeah, Little yes. Wayne. And happened. there was like a fight Wayne. or something happened at the yeah. at the yeah like some shooting yeah. or something happened. Yeah. But uh, no, so, I was, no, go ahead. No, they go had ahead. this situation, <laughs> and I'm I'm a Wu Tang fanatic, and I think first of all. I'm gonna say it officially on the Abyss podcast. Wu Tang fans are the nerdiest motherfuckers on earth, man. They're like yeah. Star Trek fans. Yep. Yeah, definitely. We're like Star yeah. Trek fans, you yep. know. And um, 100%. so I paid for the this thing out. they call it uh the Wu Tang experience. Uh -huh. the Wu Tang experience. You had to pay like it was like two thousand dollars or something, and you get what? to chill with the Wu Tang. You get to chill with them like at the tattoo shop. Oh at the wow! Bar, at the barber shop, you it's like. It, uh, Master Killer's chilling at the tattoo shop and you get to kick it with Master Killer. Like, regular everyday shit, right? So, uh, or you go to the UGOD book signing at the at the, at the the music store mm. in Atlanta or whatever. Mm. So, um, oh, we're at the meet and greet. The whole Wu is in there. Meth, Raekwon, um, uh, uh, Jizza, not Jizza, he was in the truck. Jizza didn't want to get out. But it was, it was <laughs> all the, all the uh, Wu was face. there and it was hot as fuck. I remember it was Hot as it was hot as a motherfucker, yeah, yo. And it was. I remember Rass that Cass happened to Summer. be there. He was in the tent, and he was the first person standing there. And nobody was really noticing Rass Cass that much. They were just like, Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang. And uh, I seen Rass. I live. I listened to him my whole life. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I love Rass Cass music, man, and like all that. So I was like, yo, Rass Cass. And I don't really like doing this. I paid for it, but I don't really like doing it because it doesn't feel genuine. Like, I paid. Now I get to shake their hand or whatever. So Raskas there, I went to shake his hand and dude just looked at my hand like, oh, shit. He just looked at it and looked back at me and looked at my hand. And I was like, <laughs> wow, I just kept walking and I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to think about this. So then I wow. just went through. I met all the Wu. They signed my Wu-Tang manual. Where is that shit? I got every. Uh -oh. Here it is. Bro, it's like you. I told you I'm a nerd. Out man. He's reaching wall. into the magic. Yeah, 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 I got this dope. in plastic, man. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 
I got the woo. They, I got every member of the woo. Sign mathematics. Oh shit! Oh, oh that's dope. Find this shit. Like they do every that member. Gold sharpie. It uh, down yeah, I brought the sharpie. I brought the gold <laughs> sharpie. But nice. the, yeah, Slick Young move. DB, Young DB signed it for ODB. You know, um, let me see. I had a mm-hmm. ghost face. This is up. All of them. All oh, of them. Wow. I was just on some nerdy shit. Even um, Street Life signed this thing. You oh know? wow, that's uh, dope. Oh, but but Rascast, man, life. that dude, that dude stiffed me on the pause on the handshake. I'm not mad at it because if like artists got to go through a lot of bullshit and they have they deal with so many people, man. And you don't yeah. know who is who. You don't know who is who. So I'm not taking that Rascast no shit personal. Fuck that nigga. But it's no. hilarious. To well, me. I'm taking it personal for you. Yo, I, yeah, because <laughs> for me, I would say, you know, you go into that business knowing that that's one of the side effects right and and if you can't handle that yeah you know that's like me going to work at a factory and going yeah but i can't lift anything well what the mm. fuck are you doing here mm-hmm. that's part of the fucking job mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. of your responsibility as a famous person is you know showing love to people that support you yeah and uh, if you're in a yeah. tent with the wu-tang so, you know. and somebody decides uh. they're going to come up i think i think you should I don't know. You should at least not be a dick. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah, just, Carl, you know what? Just one of these. Yeah. At least, yeah, at least you. like, yo. <laughs> adapt you. Yeah, that was like, before COVID, too. But now I understand. I don't even shake. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah, like, yeah, that was yeah, different. Yeah, I'm like, all right. Yeah, that was before COVID. So it was like, I don't know. But oh, two no, weeks no, no. man. I'm not mad. Go ahead. Go ahead, Primo. Well, no, I mean, just to piggyback kind of what Carl said, man, like, I got to kind of disagree. I don't think that I think, well, I think that's something that unfortunately the world has pushed upon quote unquote famous people is that you're famous. Your obligation is to now uh, shake hands and kiss babies and put on your best mm. face forward when you're out amongst the people. Um, I, in, in some cases, yes. But in most cases, I don't think that that's fair that we put that requirement on them on fame or on a certain level mm. of prestige for them to demonstrate and, and be personable because we got to remember they're people as well. And they might be, I mean, Razkaz might have just been having a bad day or something. Who knows? Right? He you might have went so to the bathroom he been, yeah, okay. five minutes he before been and was he protecting he, me. You know I didn't what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm you know sorry. I don't want to like, touch <laughs> you with dickhead. My, okay. Okay. You know, so, whatever the case is. Look, I think, <laughs> right. I think there should be an etiquette on the fans. I think the fans should have respect for the person that they're a fan of. And I think a lot of people take that way too far. And that's unfortunate. That was a typical interaction, though, just based on what Rob said. You're standing in the tent in a meet and greet. Right. right. And somebody's showing you love. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't like, I wasn't trying to hug, dude. I was just like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, not have a hug, Razzcast. But but like, (laughs) even then, he could have been like, hey, man, sorry, I'm I'm not like a handshaker, but man, I appreciate it. Whatever. With the deuce. Just just sit there and then look at your hands and like, what the fuck is that? That's kind of foul. (laughs) He's still, he's still, he's still bitter over that. uh, We going to make it beat. (laughs) (laughs) But hey, yo, hold on. Hold on, that's a, you bring up another good point, though. Uh, at the same time, you know, that's what I think I love about, and again, I've, I've stated this, that's what I love about the abyss. Not even what I think I love, but that's what I love about the abyss. Currently, this new renaissance era, I think a lot of the MCs and producers and just participants in general who are coming up in this time, they have put in so much work and come from the bottom each and every individual and they've had so many of those interactions i think with their heroes right that when they have the opportunity to meet fans like for example a west side gun or a mickey diamond or any any of those you know pro dillinger any of the umbrella Mm -hmm. you want to say right they're all personable when you meet them you know they'll dap you down maybe give you a little conversation you know, they, they they know it ain't too deep. Conway, same way. He'll dap you, keep it moving. He ain't never on no, yo, get the fuck away type shit. I mean, mm-hmm. they they understand, I think, a little bit more the, the, the level of interaction that is required um, to, to be considered a, a, a cool person. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's not something where it's, it has to be, yo, you're obligated to sit there, shake hands, come on. Let's do a selfie. All right. Well, let me sign this for your kid. No, all that type stuff. You know, I mean, if that's how they feel, they will. But I think 
this generation, especially the fans, are more so like, hey, yo, I, I got all your vinyls. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the dudes who purchased your 250 limited run vinyl. Can uh -huh. I get an autograph? And, and the artists are so much more appreciative of that support, the grassroots support. I think the barriers have broken down a lot more. So yeah. I mm -hmm. think the interaction is just at a whole nother level right now, man. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes things dope right now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, nine times out of ten, because there's still some people that have some dicks, you know. Yeah, it yeah. exists. <laughs> punch them in the face. I've met a couple. Yeah, we met, we met a few. Well, you you know, know, punch they're around. The they're around. Yeah, they're around. Yeah. You know, yeah. great music. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dickhead, pussy. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, bring us. So we 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 we, we, we backtracked. We went to Genesis, yeah. but like, tell tell us about about how like rap yeah. seminar came about, man. So um, it's interesting, man, because like I've been a hip hop head forever. And um, mm -hmm. when um, when I was a college student, I had to graduate <laughs> and I, I was like, uh, I said, I don't want to work. I'm not ready to work. You know, like I don't want to get a job. So uh, I said, let me go to more school. And um, I decided to study creative writing. I got a master's of fine arts in creative writing um and study poetry I, I i you know because to me it's like raps is a lot a lot of it is poetry mm -hmm. it's not poetry but it does one. use the spoken word mm -hmm. uh to formulate ideas creatively you know and so i wanted to learn about how to put words together i wanted to learn about um uh the the techniques of writing and how the poets express themselves and how do i do it you know and how can I replicate that and uh, utilize these things? Um, and so I always had an interest in rap, but then going to learn the technical aspects of creative writing really expanded my understanding of, of writing and how to create um, mm -hmm. verses and songs and things like this, right? And, and just all the different possibilities because there's techniques that there's a name for it and it's called something. Um, and MCs, we use stuff naturally. We, we do it just like, because we've heard it or we know or whatever. It's I am big pantameter. Uh, things like that. that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Couplets and all of this. And like, um, so I studied like classical forms and poetic forms and um, all of this, right? And then, and then I was a co-founder of an open mic in my city called the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. Okay. And mm. I, hosted, I hosted this open mic for about 12, 13 years. And I okay. saw thousands of performers, thousands, poets, rappers, like any type of visual, like visual, like, like a uh, performance poetry, uh, like crazy shit, right? Like comedians, just thousands of performers, man. We, we would do it every uh, Saturday. And then we had, we would have like 30 performers or whatever, right? It was marathons, you know? Mm. Um, and so hosting got me into really studying performance. How do people perform, right? Mm -hmm. um, at this time, I was teaching at the college. I got in at the community college. I was teaching creative writing and poetry, the poetry workshop and literature, right? So mm -hmm. I'm teaching this and I always use hip hop. I always use ghost face lyrics. I always, you know, we'll, we'll watch this Eminem video or we'll, we'll dissect uh, this, this black thought freestyle or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I started a hip hop mm -hmm. student organization at the college. Uh, we got the open mic. We got the hip hop student organization. And, uh, you know, I brought KRS one to campus. Oh, so shit. KRS one did a whole lecture. It was like oh. a two hour, three hour lecture. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, oh. wow, this was 2019, right before the pandemic. Right. Um, and I, I like teaching, but I wasn't able to be my true self. Okay. I was, I was, my time was consumed with grading with committees, mm. with office hours, with meeting with students, which was cool. I like students, but I wanted to do my own thing. I've always wanted to do my own thing. So uh, after um, I had already, before I resigned from the college, I was already dabbling with rap seminar and using my academic knowledge to analyze lyrics for rappers, right? So <clears throat> I'll tell rappers your rhyme percentage. I'll tell yeah. you your average amount of rhymes per bar. I'll tell you how many metaphors and similes and allusions and 
all the literary techniques you might be using. I'll break that down. I'll put it in charts and graphs, right? Is so, that a computer that's, program or just you? Uh, it's both. It's both. So that mm -hmm. to answer that question, I have software. I have software that was created by a computer programmer that allows me to code lyrics, right? And so once a week for a summer, I met with this computer programmer to tell him how I analyze and how what's a metaphor and how do you how do I count rhymes and to, I explained my method to him and he created a software program, an interface where I upload the lyrics and it makes all the words clickable. I can click on every word and it keeps a tally, a running tally, and it does the math for me. So mm. there are many forms. So if I'm going to look for metaphors, I click on the metaphor tab mm. and I click on all the metaphors. Do, do, and then do, it gives right? you a running total. And it okay. gives me my total. Then I then I go oh, into shit. rhymes and I click on all the internals. Oh, boom, okay. Boom, and it counts all the rhymes. And then I do the end rhymes. Um, all, and so every it's about 50 literary techniques that I oh, have shit. in this in this database or in this uh, interface. And um, so when I'm coding lyrics, I read the lyrics multiple times. So first I read for rhymes, internals. Then I read for end rhymes. Then I read for metaphors, similes, images, and I tally everything. And that's what I deliver to the artist. So they okay. can use that as content. I make videos with charts and graphs, or I'll just record a reel where I'm telling you what their stats are, mm -hmm. kind of like a sports announcer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, things like that, right? But that got me into just dealing with artists. And as an English professor, I'm like, fuck it. Like, I don't work at the college anymore. I got to make some money. So let me write your bio for you. Let mm -hmm. me let me write your press release. Let me let me I've been selling merch. Let me help you set up your shop, your drop shipping. You know what I'm saying? Let me and let me let me help you get a copyright. Let me copyright mm -hmm. your shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just expanded into this, this, this business where I have services that I provide. I consult, I'll help you with your mm -hmm. writing, you know? Um, and then boom, it got into me co-owning, uh, Pendulum Inc with Mickey Fax and Chilla Jones, mm -hmm. phenomenal, okay, okay. you know, artists and stuff like that. So, you know, through my anal, I analyzed Mickey's lyrics and we, we started just building and, and next thing you know, I'm consulting for their school yeah, yeah the school, they have yeah, yeah. all these rap techniques and they're like mm -hmm. yo do these correlate to anything in the literary world so mm -hmm. it was like yo this That's technique dope. where you do this and this and i'm like oh that looks like that looks like an enjambment you know or this looks like a hyperbole or whatever so i'm just just telling them like yo this is literary nah y'all invented this right so next thing you know man i'm helping them we're writing a book with all these high level literary and lyrical techniques, you know, next thing, you know, um, I'm the curriculum editor. You know what I mean? Next right. thing, you know, they like, yo, we yeah. need Rob nice. Let's give this dude some ownership. So I got ownership in the, in the company now, you know, so um, cool. okay. and we, we work with some of the most amazing artists on the planet. We got, we've had method man teach. We mm. have Inspector Deck teach. We've had um, Saw Rock teach. Yeah, um, nice. Uh, Twista, Saw Rock. Twista came through. Oh, um, shit. My guy, uh, 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 um, Guns, Corey Guns came through. You know Another what I'm saying? LMC. Fonte, Fonte from Little Brother, you know? Mm -hmm. um, just just cra Rod, Rod Digger is coming through this year. Mm. Um, Ab Soul, we had Ab Soul a couple months ago. This yeah, month, I saw that shit, yeah. This month is King Los. So we have these Q and A's wow. with them. So it's a big answer, but but rap seminar was founded in my love for hip hop and merging it with my understanding of literature, right? Okay. And so I'm able to now show how rap is literary, like literally, it's literary, right? Mm -hmm. In in so many different That's ways, dope. not only the techniques. But the content and the concepts and the ideas and, mm -hmm. and we could do critical analysis on rap lyrics and learn Absolutely. about history, learn about Absolutely. time and place and and um, things that are happening in, around the world. You know what I'm saying? Sweet. So um, there's a lot of reference, historical references in rap. 
uh, contemporary history and whatnot. But go ahead, Primo. No, I I, I was just putting my hand up because I, I really wanted to, before you even keep going, that's exactly why I was so excited that you were coming on here because of what you're doing. The service that you're providing to the community is one of a kind and it's so important for continuing to add legitimacy to mm -hmm. hip hop as a culture. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's vital work that you're doing, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, America needs to realize the value of what hip hop and rap performance is. It's a form of Americana. Yes. Uh, it, Thank you oh for my guy froze up. Yeah, he look he looked funny. He meditated. <laughs> yeah, he's really he's building meditated. up to a thought. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. There oh, he is. Yeah, you froze back. up. You froze oh, up. Which which, which part did it end up? Oh, well, yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was to say. It's it's Americana, right? And when I say Americana, you know, there's the genre of music, folk music, right? That's called Americana, which is the are these stories of the culture of America, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, when you hear Americana, a lot of times, you you know, you, you're transported to some guy in the Dust Bowl 1920s, you know, <laughs> escaping, <laughs> escaping his farm in, a, right. in an old Ford or whatever the case is, right? Right. But at the same, and, and they put so much uh, romanticism in and uh importance on that that particular thing or whatever the case is somebody sitting on their porch in uh but fuck wyoming you know they're mm. they're creating these songs about watching the seasons change and that's oh my god that's so important that's so timeless right but then they tried to discount ice cube today was a good day right you know what i mean as oh yeah that's just that's that rap music stuff wherein He's telling a story or he's explaining and visualizing this day, this concept of a slice of America, of the mm -hmm. typical day for an L.A. individual mm -hmm. that can be found later on in the archives. Like, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if you want to know what it was like in L.A. in the 90s, let's listen to Today Was a Good Day or let's listen to Let Me Ride by, you know, Dr. Dre and them. Right. Right. So, I, 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 again, like I said, I think. The, the work that you're doing by relating those literary terms to MCs and the work that they're doing, I think is just gonna, it's just gonna continue to put the spotlight on, on the, the level of expertise and skill it takes to do what people do, to do mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. these rhyme, these MCs do out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, but also it's if artistry. I can just it is artistry. It's art. It's, yeah. it's, it's art, un unmistakably. Mm -hmm. And and just to kind of add on to that, you, you're also developing future MCs and giving them Absolutely. way more knowledge than just listening to, you mm -hmm. know, right. what's out there. And, and unfortunately, the radio dictates a lot of what people hear. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to statistically shine light on on what people are doing, but also dig into individuals and say, hey, this is this is what you're currently doing and this is why this yep. is dope and this is why this doesn't work. And, right. you know, then to be able to, to help them with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, there's, there's things, it's crazy because you get people, we're self-taught as MCs, like of course. we're self-taught. Like there's some, maybe they went to creative writing school or they took writing classes. I don't know, but for the <laughs> most part, we're self-taught and, and we're doing high level things. But when you actually go and you study it, you can start to see shit. Like when I'm reading lyrics yeah. and uh, I see somebody is like near rhyming or they'll say like, um, they'll have a rhyme. It's like close to a rhyme, but if they would have just That's changed one little, the ending of the word and made it an ING right. or mm -hmm. whatever, it would have been iller. You know what I'm saying? And like, there's Sweetie. things that it's like, without the training, you you could be nice. But when you have the training and you know what the thing is called and, and it, it really elevates what you're able to do because now you have more power, you have more control over what's going on and you're not shooting in the dark, you know? Um, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So these things are repeatable. There's a Should formula be, yeah. to what Rakim was doing. You can mm -hmm. read Rakim lyrics and see his rhyme placements. In a pattern. And what type of rhymes and, and you could, you could re 
not that we want to redo what Rakim did, but it's it's tangible. Yeah. Now, there are some things that are not tangible. And that is the element that rap seminar through the analysis cannot account for. For example, I'll count all the rhymes. I'll count all the metaphors, <laughs> but the vibe. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you can't tally a vibe. You can't tally an essence, a feeling. Yeah. Yep. Tupac. Back to had Tupac. a vibe, had an essence, had a, uh, a power. Full circle. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, can't. It's a good maybe circle, he didn't yeah. have all the intricate whatevers, but that power, I can't put that in a bar graph. You know what I'm saying? Or a pie chart. You know what I mean? Um, so I admit that my system is flawed to an extent. Uh, literarily, literarily, I'll tell you everything, all the technical shit. But that doesn't mean you nice. If you have a thousand rhymes in a verse, that don't right. mean you nice. Right. If you have a million similes, it don't mean you're nice. It Let's means you got funny. a lot of similes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, or you can write really well. well. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I think the magic happens when you can merge the energy with the words, you know, and, and you're able so, yeah. to channel that in a certain way. You know I look I mean? at it like the Absolutely. difference between uh, a stand up comedian and a comedy writer. Mm. You know, there's, you know, when you get a Mitch Hedberg or you get a, you know, there's you, you have a style on stage, a Stephen Wright, um, a Kevin Hart. You know, Kevin yeah. Hart does what Kevin Hart does. Mm -hmm. And you could give that same material to me and I am not going to kill. <laughs> you know what right. I mean, though? Right. There's, because, right. because, and I think everybody's going to know whether something feels right or, f you know, like you're, you're going to, I don't think that needs to be quantified necessarily. Exactly. The important yeah, part it? is, is being able to go through, because you, you don't need to know why something sounds good. Right. You know, why something right. feels good. You just know. You just know. You just know. No yeah, one had exactly. to explain me why fucking felt good. It just yeah. did. So you don't need to tell but there's people who will study I'm the sure science. There's of a fucking. science of what goes on down there and you know why it saying? feels good. I don't so, give a right. shit. So, so the, I don't need there's no people science. study the science of it. You <laughs> know what I mean? So it's it's <laughs> it's levels to this. Right. There there is a rapper out there um whose name is MC Chris. Yeah. Uh, are y'all uh, and he raps about all the shit that I love, but I hate it. Oh. Wasn't he the Adult Swim dude or the yes. Hunger Force? Uh, yes. One of the voices or something? I don't know if he's one of the voices, but I know he raps about a lot of nerdy shit. MC Lars is one as well. Okay. Uh, nerd nerdcore. It's nerdcore rap music, and I just don't like that shit because it's corny as fuck. Doom made that shit cool. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like how Biggie made like fat niggas fly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm fat, but I'm still fly as fuck. Yeah, yeah. so there's certain things. Are you the only person in possession with of this computer program to actually do that? Or is that something that uh, someone can actually buy? You made this, you got with the uh, the uh, the guy. Yeah, it's and, a one um, of one. Made this. It's a one of one. That's good. Yeah. Now, That's good. proprietary I, software. That's yes, right. there mm -hmm. is. There is the capability of allowing people to use the interface for their Don't own do intents, right? I was going to say, you should, you should license it. No, you need I to do it for yet. the culture. The, I haven't yet, because it's still kind of like, even though it's been some years, it's still kind of beta, you know? Mm, um, that's what's up, okay. But we, were wor we are working on version 2.0, which Ooh. would allow people to sign in with a username Paid and subscription. And Whatever you want to it. code, you could you could code country music. I don't give a damn. Like you could you <laughs> could any words you want to analyze and tally something, mm -hmm. feelings, emotions, concepts, content. Right? Uh, there was a guy that I work with. Um, he has uh, a company called the Healing Power of Hip Hop, and mm. he does analysis on messages of triumph and. Um, um, like motivational messages and emotional messages in rap music. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I did an analysis for him on J. Cole about uh, certain things he wanted me to look for. Like one of one, one of them was like community themes of community empowerment. 
So anytime I saw J. Cole saying something about empowering people, I tallied it, right? Uh, mm. There was one that's like themes of destruction or themes that harm people. Like anytime it was like something violent or disrespectful towards women or, you know, you know, uh, uh, celebrating gun violence or whatever that I would tally. Right. So this system allows me to look for whatever I want, really. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there is potential to monetize it, but. I'm not ready for that right now. I'm not I'm not ready to do that because I would want to do it right. And I don't think I'm ready for that right now. I'm, 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 I'm That's not cool. ready. You can keep it in your so pocket. Better do it. You better do it for Alan Iverson. Get a hold of it and put it into that. <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it still AI, needs a little work, AI. man. Uh, <laughs> I was scared of the AI uh, wow. and encroaching Alan on Iverson. that. Alan Iverson. AI, yeah, yeah. man. But wow. AI wow, is not ready yet. AI uh, can't tell you what a metaphor. Like, nope. metaphors, it, it'll, it'll tell you, like, the obvious ones like love is blind mm. but there's some things that okay. like lukey might have metaphors that he speaks that the computer can't pick up because it's a cultural reference hey, you have to Al know Luki. Alan Iverson. there you go Wait, he just did right, right there yeah, yeah. 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 so no, there's Luki things that the AI thinking, can't man. get <laughs> yeah Luki be I on tried some crazy it. shit man he definitely he definitely be on some but no you know you I, I know you said you ain't smoke ready. Crack, though. No, no, Luki. We know you don't smoke crack. He knows. <laughs> hey, Derasta, Luki doesn't hang right. out with people that smoke crack either, man. You know, special yeah, shout what's out to our guy the Woolies, in Germany. man. Yeah, them Woolies showing a little too much them. knowledge. Yikes. <laughs> hey, look. Big, up, Mac, was, big, up to, big up to Mac Nice. Yo, shout out Mac Nice, man. What go, I was going to say is, you number one, I'm I'm a bit torn because I feel like for the sake of the culture, you need to create and archive this technology. You need to keep it somewhere. You need to have a copy of this program yeah. somewhere yeah. Uh, for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and also that you can be able to teach other people how to use it. Yes. You know, people that you select that you think are going to truly appreciate it and not bastardize it or try to, you know, uh, Poor monger it out or whatever because mm -hmm. that's eventually mm -hmm. that's essentially what we want to do. We want to keep the essence pure of it. But mm -hmm. what that what that technology is that that's a that's a grail almost, man. And yeah. it, it needs to be it needs to be protected at all costs. But again, like I said, I'm torn because on the other side, I haven't done this in a while. But shout out the Googles because Google got all the money in the world, and if you're ready to sell it, they will buy that shit from you and get it to everybody who. Who can have it? You wow. know what I mean? So man, 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 man. I, I will I'm say at the saying. very least, Good day. keep the documentation as you're going through <laughs> bars and you're you're dissecting them yeah. like a surgeon. Oh, yeah, yeah keep, keep your notes. Stats. Absolutely. Keep the everything stats. is there. Everything even, is stored in a database. Yeah, because even and, if no and, one ever uses the software, the the data is important. Yes. Yep. And with the data, I can tell you regional information. I can look at, mm, let's go. Okay, MCs from New York. What techniques do they use the most? What type of rhymes do they favor? Right? Um, MCs from here or whatever, right? The, the data is is crazy. I've coded uh thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of rhymes that exist and uh different types of just all kinds of stuff, man. It's so rappers are brilliant. Let me say yeah, that, man. Absolutely. We're brilliant people, man. Brilliant. But, but have you have you uh, dissected any of the less brilliant, like Here Soldier Boy? I I I analyzed Lil Nas X. Okay, uh, which one? What's Old what's, Town what's Road? Song? Oh yeah, that's a good good. It's a fun okay. song. It was like two rhymes per bar. It was mm -hmm. like the least amount of rhymes I ever seen in my life. <laughs> It was crazy, but well, also one of the most idea. selling kind of, it was yes. not really, not like lyrical, but one of the most selling songs ever. I think it went diamond or some crazy shit. Yeah, like, but and, that's not all hip hop fans. It's not. It's not. Yeah. I don't know, that song is weird. Little, but I, little, I, I little analyzed Lil Nas X. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did you what? say? Soldier Boy. What? Nah, I never analyzed Soldier Boy. Nah. Oh, uh, this was pretty whack. Why I mean, would I'm you? I'm just saying, like, I'm just for the fuck of it. 
The yin yang There's twins. things that they do though. Like no, don't disrespect the yin yang twins, bro. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. I'm because not disrespecting are, them. I'm just hand, saying she, she got the hand up. But you say the same name as a soldier boy. She got a hand up on her knees and then it's still on the stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. wow. While you're out here uh, spouting classic, classic verses in bars, Lukey, there you go. Saying, Are you I'm happy? Saying, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, I'm saying, but twins. you ain't twins. How dare you, you, man? But he said, yin yo, yang yo, twins. Rob Nice. Yo, 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 Rob Nice. Yin Yang twins, prime time. Where else? Prime time. What else was popping out? Yo, they had oh, that yeah. shit. Oh, and come anytime on, man. the song you ain't came saying on, nothing. yes, the man. Atrium, all the girl, all the all girls just shit. going yeah. crazy. Oh my God, yo, boom. I, I remember a nigga held me like this. Like, well, I, 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 my arms in the air. I didn't know the nigga. Nigga held me back. Nope. And like, the girl was grinding on my dick. I'm like, oh my God. I didn't even know. I don't even know. Thanks, That's bro. Real yeah, That's wow. real camaraderie. That's real camaraderie. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Something oh, there God. off of some little yeah. John. Some little John, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, so I can't. I tell can me, tell me, yo, tell me, yeah. Lukey, man, yeah. what, what, what? What whack rappers you want me to analyze, man? I'll, I'll take yeah, some Lukey. requests from you, G. You know what I mean? Come on, like, Lukey. Let me know, Give us like, a good one. Um, I don't think he's really whack because he's from where I'm from, but Chingy. Nah. Chingy? No, we want a okay. whack rapper, man. No, no, uh, Chingy, no. I think he's kind of whack. Go go all the way. Is who's he that love the, the you do it right there? Is that Chingy? Yeah, that's right there. That's right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, I I don't know if really I don't, I don't have the patience. The words in there. That's the thing, man. Yeah, like that, that's what I'm I saying. don't have the patience for it. A lot of because I feel crazy. Like <laughs> okay, like scientifically breaking down. Like I love it how you do it right there. Like okay, yeah, so, but, but he's rhyming the St. Louis slang. He's rhyming the St. Louis slang. That's slang a regional thing. With the that's word, true. with the words. So Durr. are you really? Are you really? Is it really a rhyme? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What word? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think. In my book, French country, I said crunchy. Country grammar to me is almost a classic in my book. I'm, I'm from outside of St. Louis. I mm -hmm. love that album so much. But is he really, are we really rhyming words? Are we? Is the there? If it's established her, slang, her I think it is. Absolutely. <laughs> but I think is if that it's going to type, if you type it in, is it going to, is it going to rhyme? But no. that's the that's the gift of being an MC is when you can take words and make them rhyme. Eminem did, did well as well. That's Eminem how did you do it, right? Words rhyme. Away. Or the near yeah. rhyme, we call it yeah, near exactly. rhymes, near right? Rhymes. Yeah, 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 close, near rhymes, close, 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 close. We need it. Yeah. We we gotta be able to slant rhymes and and do that because we'll be so, so limited it. without it. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, yes. serve on. Remember serve on. Serve on. Cast. I remember mm -hmm. serve yeah. on when he rapped the song on Pun. Yeah, yeah. What about Mac Maw? Was Mac Maw what? Or was he good? He was on. I like Mac Maw. Mac Maw cool. Yeah, nah, I ain't yeah. fucking with it. Great so, all about the Fetty. It Fetty. would be interesting. I would like to. He's not Which whack boy? by any means, but uh, E forty yeah, is whack. I would e like to analyze yeah, E forty lyrics. Ooh, you know, E forty is interesting with his raps. Exactly. That's what I was just about to say. E forty. Uh, he said I it himself. Like he, he raps it. He raps in cursive, right? If everybody else raps in in normal block yeah. letters, E forty raps in cursive. Oh. His rhyme scheme is really something else and it's his delivery and everything his cadence, everything Ooh. about his his he's an original is really individual unique. yes I'm it's, it's, it's totally time. unique yeah. and yeah. Okay. Okay. that's yeah. what i think I uh, a lot of mcs nowadays have gotten away from and uh, rob you please chime in because you touched on it before like the regionality the regional originality of people mm -hmm. i think has gone away I'm is is kind of on the done. decline yeah, it's almost done, man. So when what, what it, well, even in New York, it's it's done. I mean, everybody sounds like everybody else. A mm -hmm. drill music. A oh, one one more before we get to it. Everybody. Uh, Silk the Shaka. <laughs> yes. Silk the Shaka. Oh, is Absolutely. Thanks, Lukey. Silk, ah! yo, I can't <laughs> No, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, yo, I think, I think I, everybody like... on the earth can agree <laughs> with Silk the Shaka being trash. I I don't think you're gonna get an <laughs> argument from anybody. Even Master hey, P thinks Silk the Shocker is garbage. He, he, he refused so Rhyme on B. He says he Silk the Shocker. Mystical. Yeah. What about Mystical, man? Because he, I think he, Mystical's he, dope. <laughs> mystical is... Mi here mystical I go. Is, here I go. I like that. Yeah, here I go down, track. Down. That joint was... I, 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 I was in Florida. Smoking. Y'all ever heard Still Smoking? that down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, Mystical. Yeah. I think Mystical is actually a really good rapper. But Silk the Shocker, no. 
No. No, nah, not at all. Not at all, man. Boom, boom, boom. Not at all. It ain't my fault. This one might be controversial. What about Buckshot? I don't think he's black at all. B- Buckshot BDI? as is in BDI. Black Moon? Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't yeah, been like, rapping for a minute. Maybe it's not re- relevant, but No, no, no. I think that's very relevant because again, let's go back to what we here we go full circle. You know there was a time in in the early 90s that the top rappers were Buckshot, well, but, yeah. Biggie and Tupac. Mm. Those were the top rap and then Method Man and Red Man. Yeah. Those were like the top 5 rappers. Mm-hmm. That were on the rise mm-hmm. because then you know Tretch Tretch was really the top rapper of that era. If we mm-hmm. gonna really start digging deep, don't let me uh, start my naughty by Talking nature like appreciation mid-90s. threat. <laughs> yeah, that early that early nineties. Yeah, like ninety four. Yeah, Ice Cube, Tretch. You know that they were the main people running the radio and running the airwaves, right? As far as uh, rapper rappers, mm-hmm, but yep. you know, we all know, you know, obviously there was Cool G was still doing his thing, Heavy LL KRS cool was, doing, was still his doing, thing. doing stuff, LL, yeah, you know, there was people af- absolutely demonstrating. But as far as Buckshot, you know, he, I think he's another one of those dudes that it's the intangible, you know, it's the feeling that you right. get when you hear Buckshot mm-hmm. spitting. He may not be the most technically dope. Dude, he may not be really spitting a lot of dope shit either, to be honest with you. He's not chemistry. saying like, yeah, he's not saying top of the line words. He's not right. bending the, the English like language. Chemistry. What's better, his, chemistry his or monkey chemistry. bars? <laughs> monkey bars. <sighs> monkey bars, man. Monkey bars with chemistry. Me, Absolutely. I think you, I, I, go, you, I go monkey bars. Well, what's, what's, album album what's better? Huh? Hold on. What album about, was better? Monkey bars. I, mean, I got to see them both, but I like monkey the monkey bars, bars yeah, cover. I like the chemistry cover better, but monkey bars definitely better. Monkey bars. Monkey bars like is the, crazy. That, isn't, that that with the, isn't that with the space monkeys? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, but that shit was had crazy. That shit was chemistry insane. joint. Yeah, and it opened up with Gene Gray. Chemistry. Chem- chemistry. Some, 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 some Gene Gray opened it with the definition of chemistry and shit. Yeah, chemistry yeah, is the one with Ninth Wonder on the cover. Yeah, yes. that's the Ninth Wonder album. Nah, I gotta go with the uh, Monkey Bars. Yeah, monkey, bars. Monkey, monkey Bars. Monkey Bars got a better cover. Yeah. yeah. Monkey Bars. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bought both of them joints. And so, my homie, Icky, Icky Slick. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, obviously, being a woo head and, and listening to, you know, the artists that you mentioned, do you, in your, in your science, break down trap or drill at all? Is that something that you fuck with? I would like to, I would like to, honestly, I would like to analyze some drill uh, because it's an interesting cadence, man, what they do. They sound many of like, I don't listen to a lot of drill. I appreciate it, though. I I, like there's there's something about drill that I really like. And I don't know what it is, but I I like it. You know, (laughs) I don't think it's dance moves. (laughs) That's New York (laughs) drill. We talking about OG drill, right? I'm talking about New York drill. drill. I'm talking about New York drill. drill. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about New York drill. Grafted drill. Yeah, I like. I kind of like that. I like oh, that. He said grafted. Uh, that's that's grafted drill. Uh, Bronx that's the, drill the specifically. Like, yeah, drill Bronx, from Chicago, the Bronx. Drill is so. real. Bronx drill, Brooklyn drill. Yeah, I know. There's, you know, there's their difference. They're all, but which is funny because they're all descended from uh fucking Chicago. London. No, that's no, that, no, they're all descendants of London. Wow, you know? that's that London drill. Yeah, right? and London was influenced by. Obviously, they were all influenced by Chicago early on, Chicago. but New York yeah. started gravitating, especially Brooklyn started gravitating towards that London drill sound. Yeah, and then they, because I think a lot of the producers they just started copping beats from London producers for whatever reason. Yeah, it's the same I, beat every song. It, it could be. It could be. And yeah, I, I, yeah. you know, I honestly, man, I have not analyzed very many trap artists, if any. I don't think I ever have. Uh, no you know, future. You ain't do no nope. future. Nope. I should. I probably should. I nah. should. I should. I right. rarely yeah. analyze anybody to. commercial. Yeah. I haven't really analyzed much commercial. We have, we have too much going on in this. You did. It's usually just the abyss. You, did, just the abyss. Yes. you yeah. know, MCs yeah. from the I, abyss. You know that yeah, I analyze. Cool. I thought I saw. There's there's I thought I saw. I thought I saw you do Kendrick a, a, a long I, time ago. I analyzed ago. Kendrick, yeah. I man. I did. So, that was one I wanted to get some more likes and follows and shit. So oh, once in a while, okay. I'll do Click like an Eminem <laughs> thing or a clickbait, like a little like <laughs> I, it's not my heart's not really in it, but I'll do it, you know, kind of thing. Um, 
So I, I throw those in once in a while. Like I, I'm not going to analyze Drake. Yeah, no disrespect fair. to Drake in Canada. I know you're he's not, not going to offend anybody here. I'm not going to yeah. analyze Drake lyrics. Like you I used just to call you know. me on my cell phone. Now, if Drake <laughs> called me, if Drake hit me up and sent me a DM like, "Yo, I need you to analyze this joint," you know, I would be like, "All right, I got you." Right. You know, but like yeah. oh, my own will, probably not. You know, yeah, you can't analyze none of that Caribbean uh, singing shit that he be doing now. The nah. house music shit, like what? <laughs> Yeah, why? Why I, would I? You know, I, I, I heard that last yeah. album just because make make my make me mad, and I like it was like one long song featuring Twenty One Savage. <laughs> 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 that's wow. all. That's that's all you gotta put in your computer to anal- analyze one long song featuring Twenty One. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in the <laughs> Yo, database. That's man. hilarious. Put it in your database. That man. is funny. That's a crazy combination. Those guys together. It man. was. Yeah, I listened to it. I listened to it just because, like, just to, just to be knowing what what they did. But same, so I didn't same. go back to it or nothing. Same, um, <laughs> uh, absolutely same. Shout yeah. out to my homie, the homie Isaiah. Shout out to the dude Larry F on uh, Instagram. His daughter really likes that album, and like, uh, I try to turn it on for my daughter. She she liked it, but she just looked around the whole time. Like, yeah, like is this okay to listen to? Yeah, what yeah, am yeah, I hearing? What, is, what are these sounds? They're offensive. But then again, then again, that's the time when we turn the car seat to the front, and so it was, it was like a whole new world. Oh, there she's we like, go. Yeah, she's like, oh my god, I see everything. Fuck, like, yeah. oh shit, man, like, yeah. Damn, so, so that's the connection yeah. she's gonna have with with Discovery. She's gonna have a lukewarm ass Drake. album playing in the background. <laughs> I guess I guess I guess like, I remember it. the first time yeah, I yeah. saw the world. Yeah, Drake yeah, was yeah, listening right. to yeah. this yeah. Yeah. every day. Yeah, but Isaiah <laughs> was listening to a lot of Spanish music, and like his daughter asked for Drake, and so I was like, "Let me put this shit on and see what the fuck my daughter do." Yeah, but she's like, she wasn't fun, having man. it. She's like, turn, wow. "Let me turn on some '70s soul or some do do do." You know what I'm saying? Hilarious. Yo, okay, yeah, yeah, I want to, yeah. I want to, I want to start a, uh, I want to start a trash fire right now, man. Oh, Go ahead, Leo. Well, no, it's it, it's it's Rob's fault because he said he does. Oh, it's so Rob's wanna, fault. Yeah, I want I want to do it. It's, <laughs> Let's blame oh, the it's, guest. It's it's nothing. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing major. <laughs> you know, ahead, but uh, we we've been doing this thing where we've been asking people lists and stuff like that. So I want you to give me five MCs currently who you feel like are pushing the envelope and really doing amazing things uh, creatively with, the with their pen. Mm-hmm. Who do you and, and and I'm speaking specifically about this abyss off the top of your head, off the people you've been analyzing or just casually listening to and coming across. Who do you feel like has that intangible and also has that mastery of those those techniques and those literary uh, devices that you that you're familiar with? Well, that's a, t- that's a mean, tough question. Other <laughs> than Sukiyana. Sukiyana. <laughs> <laughs> um man, this is difficult. Um you out of control. I gotta, I gotta say I I have been listening to a lot of SD Nack. Like yeah. you know, yeah. I, I knew his name was gonna come up. A lot of his albums, like all of his like I haven't heard much whack shit. I don't think if I've heard anything whack, you know, mm-hmm. like the Mini Mansion albums are dope. Um yeah. like uh I like the triple black diamonds, uh, yeah. one and two with Al Davino. I like Al Davino a lot. Their cadences are very unique. Uh, it's crazy. different. It's different, you know, uh, avant garde type stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I really like them. I can listen to their music on repeat. I got a lot of their records and stuff like that. Um, I also, okay. also I would have to say I, I like Ka a lot. There we Ka, go. Yep. Ka is, at first I was Sick. like, what is this shit? Like, he's just talking. Right. At first but you're like, what is it? I right. can't, but then it was, it's like, you you just get hooked on it, you know? Exactly. So I like, Ka, like, when I'm at the crib just doing the dishes, it's 12 a.m. and everyone's asleep, I'm, I'm listening mm-hmm. to some Ka, like, yo, let me clean these dishes, you know what I'm saying? Listen mm-hmm. to And learn something Ka, deep you know, while you with it, real right? quick, right? Yeah. Um, I really like Ka, uh, okay, SD Nack, Al Davino, those guys. Um, That's only two. two. That's, that's no, no, that's, that's three or two. And Al Davino, we don't call a pair one? because okay, yeah, that's, right, that's right. two. Yeah, so you got um, two in. Let me see. Let me see. Who else have I been listening to that that I really like here? Um, I like Jay Royale. Mm, umbrella. Okay. Jay Royale umbrella, is nice. Yeah. 
He just I dropped re- that part three. Did yep, you did you he hear did, that? Hear man. that yet? Yo, I fucked up, man, because mm-hmm. I went to Bandcamp and I copped the same album twice. I got the last ah. one again. Oh wow. And I was hot. I was like, fuck, man. I, just I send him a the deal. Because I was on you. the airplane. And it was like right before I was boarding. And I was like, yo, I need this joint for the flight. And yeah. I got to download it. And then oh, my shit. band camp wasn't down opening up. And then I, I just saw the first one. And I, it was like the old one with the, the first, Ivory Stoop uh, or something. Ivory yeah, Stoop, the yeah, one yeah. after Ivory Stoop. So oh, I, I had yeah. that one twice. I and I didn't name. get the one I wanted. But I, I, I really like Jay Royale. Um, let me see. Uh oh, Rashid Chappelle. Yes. Oh yeah. That oh, dude that is shit. nice. T- yeah, yes, Rashid sir. is nice, yo. I-, I like his music a lot. Where-, where am I at? Is that four or five? Four. That's, That's four. four. I like Who's Rashid more? Chappelle. I gotta choose wisely right now, man, because the fifth spot is always the most difficult. It's all right. <sighs> I'm not, don't fit, worry. man. I'm going to try not to think about who's going to see this later and hate no, on me. Don't worry. They, they, for not mentioning hey, them. This is, this is a learning experience um, for them. They're loving this. Don't worry. This wasn't What's a up, definitive fellas? top five. This is just who, who you feel not, is really doing it. No, right right now, just I'll, top I'll, say, top I'll, say, I'll right. say a crazy name. I'll say a crazy name that motherfuckers don't say. I'm just not, it's not nobody serious. I'm going to say like sexy red. You know the Pow Town girl? Oh, Sexy so Red. He's going to make me, he's gonna make me mute him. Wait, the Pow Town. Yeah, turn, this is so turn, funny. Mute <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I play too much. The, 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 the boy who cried wolf, he grew up and turned into me. That's uh, right. Nigga, the, the nigga See, look, there he right. goes again. There he yeah. goes, Rob. You know what I mean? Like, Luke, you if, sound like he's spinning a bunch of nonsense, but it's no, really but technically ill what he's saying. He got, yo, he got metaphors, man. Got, I'm telling I'm you, yeah, it, man. He a if diabolical if thinker. If the wolf is it's sexy, like what red, or Raven lead, Simone. Right? What, what was the, uh, <laughs> there's so many quote, Lukey, Lukey quotables on these albums, man. It's crazy, yo. Thank, thank, yeah, you, my, thank, thank you, my dude, man. I guess what was the one shit, he man. said on Gladiators? He was like, people don't know about the um. You always worried about uh, the team. I, it was about teams and sports and the, 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 oh man, I forgot what it was. Man, I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, you, were on, uh, you were freestyling. You were freestyling. Yeah, Nocturne. I was on that one. And you were like, oh, yeah, people yeah, don't yeah. know about the, uh, like, the, the, yeah, um, they don't know, they don't know about the, how good the, the, good, the regular nigga. Yeah. yeah, yeah there yeah, was yeah, some yeah, shit yeah. like that. It was oh, that, man. Yeah, yeah. Like you, 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 you spit poetry on those joints, man. That's why you the, the skit God, you know? Thank you, um, man, man. I'm just talking shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, man. There know. was another Thank one, you, man. man. I gotta look at <laughs> yo, you know what? I can't front, man. I think I think You're having a brick. I'm I'm back here yet. Yeah. Rome Streets. Okay, okay. I like Rome Streets. Now, yeah. now I, I would like to see some growth, content growth, right? Like Rome Streets, he has his formula. I feel like it's rehashing the same ideas a lot right however absolutely he has a joint with ransom and mm-hmm. shay nar mm-hmm. that joint is different that that was one it's a concept right and uh i think she anyway i i, I like ransom a lot too i like ransom mm-hmm. uh he he's a beast you know what i'm saying yeah um i wanted to throw in a female rapper too i i do like shay nar i like what she's doing um mm-hmm. Let me see. Uh, this this uh, Scarlet is very interesting to me. I, no, I can't say I, I listen to her lyrics. I don't listen to what, but I saw some of her videos where the the joints where she's just talking to the camera. Yeah, like it, it just cool. about yeah. her feelings and who she yeah, is and like, I like that. her trauma. That is very moving shit right there. Like that shit was Indeed. phenomenal. You know, I, um, I like the music. I, I want to yeah. see where she's going. I want to see where she's going. I have hope for her. That's um, interesting. But, okay. You know, I have hope. I have no hope. I, I, I have nah. no hope. <laughs> but I like, I like, like, uh, people get mad at me. I say this all the time. Like, I love to hear Nipsey speak, but I didn't like to hear his music. It's all I didn't like, like his production. music either, honestly. honestly. Yeah, it's all, honestly. all production, all production based. So I root for the root for the man. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the like, game? Yeah. I don't rock I mean, with the game either. I don't the game like really is the game one of those either. ones that has all the rhymes and all the the similes and everything, but he just don't have the heart, like the the the, un- the flavor, intangible feeling isn't there. You know, what I mean, it just yeah, seems I like just, he's reciting a bunch of stuff all yeah. the time, and, and it just were, happens to rhyme. Like he makes one, one ball. verse out of a <laughs> hundred. Yeah, he's a corn he's, ball, he's definitely a corn like, ball. He, yeah, he's a fat, yeah. the corn ball. Yeah. You know, and people be like, "Yo, he can rap real good." I'm like, "Yeah, but I mean." 
Yeah. Then they think they no drew against, hear it. You think you think you think the game sound like Nas and the Nas sounds yo yo Droog and game all that together. But he's the number one cornball. He really is. Uh, I thought, I know thought he Logic ball. was the number one cornball. Oh yeah, yeah, he's the king of the cornballs. Not number one, <laughs> the king. He's the he had to fight Logic at the end. Uh, he's, the he's, the, he's the big boss at the he's end the of the big game. Boss. Yeah, double dragon style. Hey, yo, son. Yeah. No, you know the sixth sense. They was like, boom. Some people don't even know they dead. Yeah, Some people don't even know they cornballs. Mm. They, yeah. they don't even know. Mm. They feel they self and they smell. They smell themselves so much. They got so much money, they don't even know they lame. You can't tell them yep. shit, G. Yep. Word. They got that Kanye West invisible, like, I'm, I could do anything I want type shit. Yeah. Boom. That's so like uh, the others, the others with Nicole Oh, my Kidman. God. Mm. With the dead people living in the house, but they don't yeah. know they're dead. They, they think it's the other people's dead. dead. The, yeah. That shit is crazy. Yeah, but man. That's, that's, that's like, a lot of people don't sit back and reflect and see that they, or smell that they shit stink. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They don't, but yeah. I'm over here. I know my shit stinks, and I'm I'm cool with it. You know what I mean, <laughs> man? Luke yeah. be spitting right. that shit, man. Does, like, come on, man. Multi yeah. multi layers of science hidden Let's within go. bullshit, man. It's G-D. like G-D. G-D. We, we we here, man. We here, yo. And Carl's my friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I asked that man. The ginger tastes like garlic, man. I'm dumb as fuck, man. What you got there, bro? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna show you. Let me see what I got. Let me see. I'm gonna, it, I'm gonna, that is that is interesting. Uh, when you go back and watch this, you're gonna be bugged out. You look like you grabbing bricks out the wall. Yeah, uh, listen, exactly. This, this, I like this album. Uh, DJ Mugs and Mock Homie. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this kill, joint. Twos, line, twos, or, or whatever. Two yeah. yeah, that twos, the two, I can't even pronounce it. Yeah. And I listen to a lot of producers. Big Ghost. Of course. It's that Big Ghost Limited. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, with the, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, with, with, uh, Widow, yeah, Widow, yeah, yeah. Widow Waker. Widow Waker, Widow Waker. This shit is fire, man. Yeah, I listen to a lot of producers, man. My favorite producer like right it. now is uh, V Don. Yeah, I Shout rock with V Don. Yeah. So, so you like brap over uh over the next next saw Jim Duggan joint? I, I really like brap. I like brap a lot, man. I listen yeah. to that joint on repeat. I, say, I like the next saw too. I like the next saw too. I like brap a little more though, like one percent more maybe. Yeah, I like but, Shay's um, song a lot. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, as far as right now between the knack verses, like I like Shang's song a lot, but at the same time, it's a couple. Uh, I forget the name of the song. It's like song number eight or nine on uh on the knack saw joint that is it's almost the same. It yeah, knack is doing his thing, man. But yeah, yeah definitely V Don. V Don like is one of those music ones, a man. lot. Yeah, I can so listen to his beats. And then um, <laughs> my guy just dropped Jr. Swift, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. That's my guy. Shout out Yo, J.R. Swift. His production is wild, man. He just dropped a, a beat tape on iTunes. I think it's called Number Three Zero Three. Fire. Mm-hmm. Little, okay. little short beats, but I, I really like uh, I like J.R. Swift a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. I want to see where he's Swift, going, man. I think he has some more work coming on the way with uh, West Side Gun, maybe. That's or what I was just about to say. He got some work coming with, uh, I believe, Conway and West. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, I mean, he's one of those dudes that, again, during the the I hate to say the infancy, but the infancy of this new renaissance, he was one of those dudes that was crafting the sounds that was putting yeah. in the work mm-hmm. on a lot of the songs that you were like, yo, this is dope. Who who made this before you even were checking for right. whose name is this? Who made this? It, I mean, J.R. Swift was right there. Yeah. getting busy. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah he's phenomenal. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad people are backtracking and actually going back. You know, whenever this is like a, a real marketable and profitable time in hip hop, people are going and backtracking, just like Pounds getting with uh, Flea. So yeah. I think mm. that uh, he was he That's was dope. like uh, one of the first motherfuckers who was hitting, and now mm-hmm. all of a sudden there's a time period where things were stagnant, and now Pounds gets to get back in the limelight and shit like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Carl Primo Jab, we've been on here for a while. Let's uh, go ahead and. Uh, Try to wrap this up, but Rob Nice, bro. Uh, yo, yo. We've talked for all, almost an hour and a half. It felt like it's been like 10 minutes, bro. Yeah. It's real, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm real telling shit. you. Yeah. We can keep going, yeah, no, you yeah. know, but it's no, good. No, 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 it's good. We, we yeah. can save some for another another episode. You know what I mean? Definitely, man. Or we could come back during the week, do a live or some shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm down for the lives. We could definitely yeah. go live. Actually, cool you had that. me in one of yours once. Yes, we could definitely go live. I haven't gone live in a minute. Um, yo, so just real quick, I know we gotta go, but next Thursday, 
in my city, El Paso, Texas. I'm doing mm -hmm. an event. It's called that would be this Thursday. That's this. Yeah, because this yeah, will drop Tuesday morning. morning. We're in the future. We're in the future right now. Oh, so. you're in the future. Okay, yeah, so yeah. this is going to be Thursday. But this but is Tuesday. This is a promo that Thursday, we Thursday, the weekend. 29th. Yep. This Thursday. Thursday this Thursday. Yeah. Uh, at a spot called Funk Myers Rec Room. I got terminology on the way. Uh -oh. And from Boston and Boca Floja, who's an MC from Mexico, okay. from Ciudad Juarez. I'm sorry, from Ciudad Mexico. Uh, and he is the one of the first Mexican rappers to get like worldwide notoriety, right? Boca Floja, mm. dope mm -hmm. MC. So we got those guys. It's an all elements exhibition. So we're going to have yeah, the break, break dancers dance, there. Yeah. The graffiti artists will be there doing live art and showing their black books, uh, their sketches and stuff. And dope. then we're going to have um, all kind, just all the elements, man. The, 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 the uh, MCs will be in the building, you know, we got Tesla is going to be there doing test drives, oh, giving wow. out test drives. That's legit. one of my sponsors. That's yeah, legitimacy. man. Legitimacy. Come on, man. So, um, June 29th, Funk Myers Rec Room. If you're listening to this or you are watching the podcast and you're close to El Paso, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, Tucson, you know what I'm saying? Juarez, whatever. Come wow, through. Man. You know, it's a free show, completely free. We're going to have giveaways. Um, there's going to be a Q&A panel with the artists where you can ask them questions about what they do. And uh, it's going to be a phenomenal night, man. So I just wanted to plug that real quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pause. Yeah. That's dope, That's dope man. I wish Pause. I was down there. <laughs> and it's got good weather. It's raining and shit right now. Hey, oh, it is? Carl, Carl, what else we got, Carl? Yeah. It's raining I, like a motherfucker, like 68. Yeah, I just, I really just wanted to thank you for coming on. I, you know, like Primo said earlier, um, super excited about what you've been doing for the culture and, and to elevate understanding in, in this rap game. Um, mm. you know, your, your service is invaluable and you do it with a passion that I wish everybody did their jobs with. Man, you, know, thank you can you, just man. tell that you love it. And, and I'm a big fan. I, you know, anytime I see you going live, I try to tap in. You know, I always, you know, try to throw some comments and shit in, uh, but it's genuinely because I fuck with you and I, I really, really appreciate it. So, yeah, I absolutely have we'll to come it. back. Got a ton more questions about the school and stuff like that we can mm -hmm. talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. So. We're just yeah, barely yeah. scratching the, the surface barely right now, you know, surface. like, but yo, we'll I see. appreciate you guys, man. I'm a fan of what everything you guys are doing. It's an honor to be on the show that you guys even thought of me. And, um, you know, keep sending me them end of the year voter voting things so I can keep voting on who I think is, who did this thing this yeah. year. You know, it's that's be tough. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it, be is. Hard one, yeah. it is. It is. Yeah, but, but I think Fieve and a uh, uh, Spanish man probably. Yeah, it's mm. pretty good. Pretty much that. Pretty much that. Pretty much that. It's going to be a tough year, man. I mean, it needless is. to say, it's going to be a tough year. And I'm looking forward to it because it's only it's, it's only July. You know, I know what I mean? it's, it's right? not even July. And We're only a couple has of days. been quiet since the shade drop. Sure. So, sure. right. Exactly. Who knows Let's what see. that diabolical man is doing? But anyway, uh, oh, Tau Commander, Tau Commander, Tau Commander on uh, SD Knack on the Naxal Jim Duggan album. That's, yes. That's my favorite joint on there. I yes. think he goes insane on that joint. Mm -hmm. But again, like I said, my favorite of the, the era right now is that Shang Tsung off, okay. of the, of, off the brat. I just feel yeah. like it. The the essence of that is just ill. You know what I mean? It's just that spittery. But anyway, enough of that. Again, it, it's it, the honor is all ours, really, Rob, to have You're you sick. on the show, man. I mean, mm -hmm. again, like I said, and Carl just said it. We got to keep reiterating the what you're doing by adding the academic value and the stamp to what MCs around the world and in America, just the everyday guy on the street is doing. It, it's so <laughs> awesome. It's so uh, incredibly important and and humbling and, and justifying right it really mm. you're, you're you're making people realize that what they're doing means something mm. and mm. and it it's it's dope man it's it's just unadulterated hip-hop what you're doing is hip-hop you're hip-hopping academia you're hip-hopping literary uh interpretations or the literary world and you're translating you're you're a translator you're translating emceeing rhymes into 
easily digestible literary terms. So you're doing something that we said earlier is one of the most complicated things in the world. You're taking a complicated subject and you're simplifying it or for people who, you know, they're, it's, it's simple for them to think in things in a literary term. And you're a bridge right now, man. You're, you're definitely you, man. doing thank something you. amazing, man. So yeah, man, so thanks indeed. again for being here, bro. Appreciate we appreciate that, you, man. Yeah. Thank Keep you guys. Up, man. Keep doing no your doubt. thing. No doubt. Yep. Yo, and every, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever you need me on the show, just, you know, send me that Absolutely. message. I'll be here. Um, I got the what MC mean? Toolkit Volume Five on the way. It's a bunch okay. of writing prompts and creative activities for people who write, <laughs> who are trying to generate anything creative, like you know, verses, songs, albums. It's it's going to be pheno- a phenomenal tool for MCs as well. You got to so do I'm that looking again. Looking forward man. to that dropping, man. Yeah, you got to do that again because that's something that you also used to do on your uh, Instagram, man. I mean, I mm-hmm. used to love that when you would put like your posts and be like, "All right, yeah, here's a." Here's your writing challenge for the day, yeah. you know. Yeah. Go, out, I should. go outside and look at the look at the sky and describe it in three yeah. different terms or something. You know, it's like <laughs> mm-hmm. just ill shit like that, man. Yeah, keep doing that I'm gonna shit. Do that, man. I'm gonna I'm post this turn. next yeah, one. I, I'm gonna do one. Just, I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna shout you out too. Hey, nice. hey, that's an honor. Yeah. I appreciate it, man, because I take this MC shit serious, man. So that's I know, you man. know, absolutely, man. This is science, man. And you, I gotta analyze your lyrics at some point too, man. Yeah, we're gonna get to Please send me something. That new uh, been, I've been, I've been out. meaning to get at you too mm-hmm. about it. So same. Well, yeah, I've been. I, I, we talked about it. We'll we'll yeah. we'll reconvene, mm-hmm. man. I got some, right. I got something for you. Actually, I got something coming right. real soon. Shout out Hobgoblin, man. It's coming That's real right. soon. Ooh, like that? Yep. Yeah, Jab absolutely. Goblin. Dropping like that? Oh July shit, 4th, man. Me and Hobgoblin, yeah. man. We got something for him. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. For and we gotta. I gotta finish this group album. We got. You know what I'm saying like boom, it's a yeah. group album too. I got I got a guy. Yeah. It's, it's it's tell the truth. Here's what it is, Rob Nice. I want to make a group album, but I wanted to have all the beats. I wanted to rhyme on that shit, and I want to make everybody rhyme on them shits. You know what I'm saying? I had these beats for like ten years. So wow. I got the I got the uh, the help of Black Seed Seven One Six Lean yep. Capital. Uh, what's that nigga name? Oh, I got a um, uh, Imp Mondo okay, Slay. Imp. Yeah, yep. Mondo. And Primo Jab, I got them to rap on some songs that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost done. And I got to be part that. of a skit. Yeah, yeah. But here's, here's the funny thing. No, no, no. You're part of more skits. It's a story. And it's funny as fuck, man, if you ask me. I'm ready, man. I Bruh, love it. I, I, shot, I shot a nigga, and Primo Jab's like saying, come on, man, where you going? Where you going? Where you going? And, and Carl's a Russian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and like I walk up a call. He said, "You got is everything there?" I said, "For sugar dough," and he said, "What?" I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I get, it. I got, I got it, yo. I got it." Yeah, and so it's a funny story. So, Crazy. I think I think what's missing from hip hop is sometimes personality. Yes, that's why we love Ghostface when he did the skits before. It's not even skits. He's in the studio, man. What you got on? Drinking that bullshit Budweiser Capris? Go get your feet done. Eat a dick. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, that personality is what made me like fall in love with Ghostface even more, mm-hmm. and that's something that's missing in hip hop. You missing like little, like they had like it's a whole story. It's a whole story, and Carl is the mob boss, and it goes right into an instrumental album that we haven't done the sketch yet, where wow. uh, Carl is a Colombian dude named Sosa for Dread Eye. So it all all comes together in like this one big thing. Like Carl got the, he, Carl can sound like he's German. Russian, he can sound wow, Colombian, so boom, wow. that year, so that year. So Carl, Carl, he, he, he ties all this shit together for me and Dread Eye. So yeah, it's going to be a cool thing. I'm going to send you some shit. It's yeah, please shit do. You probably never, see you never heard before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, and the I real, still, I reached out to you in the very beginning. I, I still need a Lukey Cage drop. Okay, I got I you. Need, I, I need you, a Lukey drop, man. I, I don't I know got, how to make time. that happen, man. But I got, I got, I got you, man. Going. I got it. I'm, I'm going yeah. to plug the, I'm going to plug the, pro, you want me to do a video or a, a sound bite? Yeah, you like, just got you got to talk some video, real absurd a video, shit, man. A video about, about rap seminar, like like the importance of what we're doing or whatever, like that yeah, kind of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could do yeah. like an infomercial. I could do like an infomercial. Yo, infomo- yeah. That'll be fine. Yeah. Man. I'll, yeah. I'll do yeah. that yeah. shit. That yeah. shit's gonna be wrong. Yeah. I would yeah. love that. I'll, I'll turn this way. The fuck out of that yeah. everywhere. I'll, you know what I'm saying? I'll, tur- I'll turn this way and the camera will zoom in or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rap seminar. I love that. Thank you, man. You got to talk only Lukey K shit. You got to be like, yo, you ever been outside in the summer wearing a bubble (laughs) coat and been like, yo, I'm still cold as fuck. That's right, because you a dope MC. Come to Rap Seminar and you can find out how to be cold just like me. 
Boom. Whoa, there we, oh, whoa. man. I need yeah. to be recording this. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be that guy that doesn't go to yeah. rap seminar. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, well, how do I rhyme? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, so no. So many motherfuckers be dope and don't even know it. This right here will give right. you scientific proof. You're there dope we go. or you're whack. There Look. we go. There we oh, go. Oh, man, save it. Are you yeah, better than it, Silk the Shaka? Are you better than Silk the Shaka? <laughs> find out at Rap Seminar. Well, actually, find that, out. Sorry, yes, that seminar. was your free promo. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> should, should I still rap or should I oh, not rap? Shit, Tell us you better than Silk the Shaka. How much better <laughs> than him are you? That's why you need Rap Seminar. Babies are better than Silk the Shaka. <laughs> and at the end, I'll be like, ah! No, like, you know, like, we charged up at the ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't oh my, my fault. God, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, this has been a it's been a great episode. You no know saying we're gonna get wrapped yes, and all back on this. Rob Nice, you know what I'm saying? Yes. From all over yeah, the planet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? El Paso, Texas. Go to his event Thursday. They got Teslas. Tesla's yeah. gonna be there, yeah, man. They got it's Tesla's gonna be dope. Yeah. Come on, yep. man. Let's go. It's legit hey, out got, here, man. They got Tesla and term. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, what's what's better Test than that? Drives with Tesla and term. <laughs> Come on, yo, man. that shit is that shit is wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. That's dope. Yeah, that's right. Like, different level out yeah. here, man. So Levels. indeed, well, Very well, many we'll levels. see y'all, motherfuckers, next week or during the week. You never know. Mm-hmm. Never mm-hmm. know. Don't smoke crack. See y'all next week. Bye. Peace. Salute. <laughs>